हेलो दोस्तों अगर आप आई एन के सबसे बड़े मॉड्यूल जो कि हमारा मॉड्यूल डी है मॉड्यूल डी से थोड़े परेशान हो तो आज आज का वीडियो आपके लिए एकदम परफेक्ट है मॉड्यूल डी में यूनिट 29 से लेकर यूनिट नंबर 45 यानी कुल मिलाकर 16 से 17 यूनिट हैं तो इन सभी यूनिट्स के सारे इम्पॉर्टेंट पॉइंट्स को हम एक ही वीडियो में रिवाइज करेंगे ये वीडियो स्पेशली उन स्टूडेंट्स के लिए है जो एग्ज़ाम के लिए कम टाइम होने की वजह से एक क्विक रिविजन वीडियो चाहते हैं हर एक यूनिट हर हर एक यूनिट के की कंसेप्ट को सिंपल और आसान लैंग्वेज में समझाया गया है ताकि आप जल्द से जल्द उसे अच्छे से ग्रास्प कर सकें तो अगर आपको एग्ज़ाम क्रैक करना है वीडियो को एंड तक जरूर देखिए क्योंकि आज के सेशन के बाद आपका मॉड्यूल डी के सारे टॉपिक्स बिल्कुल क्लियर हो जाएंगे चलिए शुरू करते हैं 29 विल बी इजियर फॉर यू नाउ लेट्स बिगिन विथ फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल फाइनेंशियल मार्केट आर प्लेसेस वेयर वेल्थ मूव फ्रॉम सेवर टू द इन्वेस्टर सो वेल्थ मूव फ्रॉम सेवर टू इन्वेस्टर थिंक ऑफ इट एज अ प्लेटफॉर्म फॉर ट्रेडिंग गुड्स एंड सर्विसेस वेयर प्राइजेज आर बेस्ड ऑन सप्लाई एंड डिमांड प्राइजेज आर डिटरमाइंड बेस्ड ऑन सप्लाई एंड डिमांड देर आर डिफरेंट काइंड्स ऑफ फाइनेंशियल मार्केट्स लाइक क्रेडिट मार्केट मनी मार्केट फॉरेक्स मार्केट दैट इज कॉल्ड फॉरन एक्सचेंज मार्केट डेप्ट मार्केट कैपिटल मार्केट डेरेवेटिव मार्केट एंड इंश्योरेंस नेक्स्ट थिंग इज हाउ फाइनेंशियल मार्केट इवॉल्व इन इंडिया बिफोर द नाइनटीन नाइन्टी द सिस्टम वॉज प्रिटी रेस्ट्रिक्टेड राइट द सिस्टम वॉज प्रिटी रेस्ट्रिक्टेड Pricing was controlled, liquidity was low, and the cost were high. But after 1990, things changed with reform to make the market more structured, efficient, stable. Now, what are the key reforms? So the key reforms include free pricing of asset, removing restriction, new way to issue securities, allowing more player and financial tool to enter into the market. these were the reforms then after trading and settlement process were also improved making the market more transparent now let's take a closer look at the different segment of the financial market first up we have several key segment this question is asked every year money forex capital insurance credit derivative and mutual fund credit market this involve things like debt security and loans money market this focuses on short term debts especially like treasury bills and commercial paper debt market here we deal with long term debts like bonds and notes forex market this is all about currency trading derivative market these are instrument based on other assets like options and futures capital market it deals with long term securities like stocks and bonds insurance market this is where insurance product are traded mutual fund market this is all about mutual fund investment each of these segment serve a unique purpose in helping businesses and individual manage their finance now let's break down three important segment of financial market that is our money market debt market and forex market money market deals with the short term fund and play a big role in managing country monetary policy some common instrument here include this question is asked call money certificate of deposits treasury bill repo banker acceptance commercial paper and inter corporate fund a key private instrument in this market is commercial paper which help companies get quick access to cash the debt market also has two main part first is government security government security are the bonds which are issued by the central or state government and can be traded next is corporate bond these are long term bond issued by company to raise fund next we have is forex market the foreign exchange market involve banks customers and the reserve bank of india it has grown significantly since 1978 with daily turnover from 6 billion dollar to 70 billion dollar so that's a quick look at how this market work now let's quickly talk about the derivative market and mutual fund derivative market is where the value of contract changes based on factors like interest rate security prices commodity prices foreign exchange rate stock indices or credit rating it is all about betting on how this thing will move in the future mutual fund see a mutual fund is like pool of money that people invest 
इट इज़ मैनेज बाय प्रोफेशनल फंड मैनेजर वाया एएमसी वर्किंग अंडर एसेट मैनेजमेंट कमिटी दिस मनी इन इज इन्वेस्टेड इन वेरियस थिंग लाइक स्टॉक बॉन्ड and equities and mini money market instrument after deducting expenses the income is distributed proportionally to the investor there are two type of mutual fund scheme and the fees are regulated by sebi that is security exchange board of india there are two type of uh, mutual fund scheme one is called open ended these don't have a fixed maturity period and second is closed ended these have a fixed maturity period mutual fund offer direct and regular plan right and uh, uh, they and the market their fees are regulated by the sebi the market regulator sebi even allow schemes like real estate and infrastructure debt fund mutual fund are more popular among individual firms banks and companies because they compete with bank to raise the funds so this is all about the mutual fund simple overview now let's talk about financial market of fansung and how the price discovery work so fansung of financial market this they help in price determination meaning the price of asset are set based on supply and demand next thing is fund allocation is another fansung where money is directed toward investment that offer the required return the third thing is financial market also provide liquidity making it easier for investor to buy or sell asset quickly lastly they also allow for risk sharing meaning risk are spread between investor and entities now financial market overall connect buyers and sellers making it easier to access trade asset and ma- ma- making it easier to access and trade asset they also help reduce transaction cost and give investor important information price discovery is the process where the asset prices are determined by the interaction between the buyers and seller key factors include supply and demand how much risk people uh, are willing to take market volatility and the information available market mechanism also play a big role in getting in setting our price so that's how financial market function and how price are discovered now let's dive into few more key concept related to how price are set in the financial market equilibrium this happen when the supply is equal to demand at this point the price is considered fair next thing is risk attitude the way people feel about risk affect whether they are agree on price some may be willing to pay more if they are less worried about risk next thing is volatility if there is more volatility in the market meaning big swing in the price there is high chance for profit but also a better risk for loss information market decision like buying and selling are strongly influenced by information for example announcement from rbi can change how people trade next thing is supply and demand these two factors are crucial in determining asset prices when demand goes down supply goes up price tends to fall right price tend to fall price discovery and equilibrium when supply and demand cross over you get the fair price and but any shift in supply or any demand start the price discovery process all over again so in a nut sale the market price is always adjusting based on this factor are you ready so let's begin so first thing first what is money market money market is where short term fund are borrowed and lent think of it as a way for bank and financial institutions to manage their daily cash flow it also helps the central bank control the flow of money in the economy that is central bank intervention so now let's talk about the type of money market in money in the market first thing is call money it is borrowed for just one day next is notice money it is borrowed for 2 to 14 days next is term money it is borrowed for 14 days to 1 year now who can borrow or who can lend in the money market the first come a scheduled commercial bank see uh, a scheduled commercial bank can borrow or lend up to 100% of their capital fund on daily basis on a, on average day and on a single day they can go up to 125% so on average daily the 100% of the capital fund uh, scheduled commercial bank can borrow or lend two things either they can borrow or they can lend 100% of their capital fund now uh, payment bank and regional rural bank follow the same rule as you can see it follow the same rule at a scheduled commercial bank and for term money it is board approved limit now cooperative bank 
द कॉपरेटिव बैंक कैन लैंड और बारो अप टू टू परसेंट ऑफ देयर टोटल डिपोजिट फ्रॉम द लास्ट फाइनेंशियल ईयर सो वट एवर दे हैव डिपोजिटेड इन द लास्ट फाइनेंशियल ईयर ओनली टू परसेंट ऑफ दैट दे कैन कॉपरेटिव बैंक कैन लैंड और बारो एंड प्राइमरी डीलर हु स्पेशलाइज इन गवर्नमेंट सिक्योरिटी कैन बारो और लैंड अप टू टू ट्वेंटी फाइव परसेंट ऑफ देयर ऑन फंड सो नाउ हेयर कम्स द आर बी आई सुपरविजन सो रिजर्व बैंक ऑफ इंडिया सेट द रूल फॉर एवरी वन इन्वॉल्व इन द मनी मार्केट दिस इंक्लूड बैंक्स दिस इंक्लूड्स इंश्योरेंस कंपनीज दिस इंक्लूड्स प्राइमरी डीलर्स एक्सेट्रा थिंक ऑफ इट एज आर बी आई एक्टिंग एज अ रेफरी मेकिंग श्योर एवरी वन फॉलो द रूल्स नाउ द क्वेश्चन इज हु आर द पार्टिसिपेंट्स इन द मनी मार्केट फर्स्ट कम्स बैंक्स एंड प्राइमरी डीलर सो दे कैन बोथ बोरो एंड लैंड मनी नेक्स्ट कम्स नॉन बैंकिंग इंस्टीट्यूशन दे कैन ओनली लैंड मनी बट कैन नॉट बोरो Next comes uh, prudential limits. Each participant can only borrow or lend up to a certain limits, which is approved by the regulator. That is our RBI. Now, next question: What are treasury bills? Treasury bills help the Indian government raise short-term fund. There are three types of treasury bill based on their duration, right? So Treasury bill finance short term debt of the government of India. The first is 91 days, 182 days, and 364 days. These are issued through auction. These are issued through auction where investor can buy them. Both big player like companies and small retail investor can take part. And eligibility that is eligibility. So remember some important points. RBI can use an electronic platform called NDS call. You can see it. RBI can use electronic platform called NDS call for this for treasury bill. And RTGS is used for to settle payment, ensuring money moves in real time. And on the due date, the government repay through RTGS as well. Right. Now next next concept is who can invest in treasury bill and what are certificate of deposit. Let's move forward. See eligible eligible uh, non-resident. So who is eligible? Non-resident NRI, non-resident Indian, overseas citizen of India, foreign portfolio investor can invest if they have government approval and they follow FEMA FEMA provision. Now next come non-competitive participation. See, some group don't need to compete in auction for treasury bill. Who are they? So it includes state government and union territory, uh, provident fund, and then uh, like those from and then foreign central bank like those from Nepal, Bhutan, and uh, uh, even individual can join it without competitive bidding. Now, let's talk about uh, uh, treasury bill and CMB. CMB is cash management bill. See. What is this all about? These are short-term government debt instrument, and uh, settlement happen on T plus one basis, meaning you will get money the next working day. Minimum amount uh, is ten thousand, and it's multiple. They are sold at a discount, uh, uh, so you pay less than the face value rupees hundred and get the full amount at the maturity. Now, what about the certificate of deposit? The certificate of deposit are like short-term loans that bank issue. Here is what you need to know. First thing is they are negotiable and they are discounted, meaning you can sell them to other before they mature. Next thing is issuer, issued by a scheduled commercial bank and a few selected financial institution. They can range from seven days to one year, and the minimum amount to invest is five lakh. This is about the CD. Now, uh, CD is some more points related to the CD like tenor. So already we have told you that who can invest in CD. So investor can be uh, in individual companies and even NRI can invest. And restriction you can't take a loan against the CD. You can't take a loan against the certificate of deposit. Remember this point. Loan is not allowed against certificate of deposit. You can see individual corporation NRI. These are the eligible. No local no loan loans against CD. Even unless RBI allow it, and bank can buy back allow after seven days. Now commercial paper. Commercial paper are a bit different. They are unsecured money market instrument introduced in 1909, 1990. This means there is no collateral backing them. So only trusted high rated company can issue them. Now what you need to know. First thing is who can issue CP. So big big company corporate NBFCs and all India financial institution. Now who can invest? Both resident and non-resident, uh, but not related party like the companies on director or relative. They, they they can't invest. Now credit rating. CP must have at least A3 credit rating from a SEBI registered rating agency. Now next thing is duration. CP can be issued from seven days to one year, and trading they are traded in the secondary market mainly through brokers. 
now light treasury bill cp is also issued at discount to their face value means that you can buy them for less than what you get at maturity and uh, commercial uh, company can buy back cp after 30 days but the price depend on the market now let's talk about repo and uh, try try party repo so repo repurchase agreement is a type of short term loan first thing is seller see seller is the one who needs money they sell security like bond to get cash and the next thing is buyer buyer is the one who lend money and receive those those security as a collateral now repo rate is the interest rate uh, on the loan after the agreed term the seller repurchases the security at a higher price and the extra bit is the interest now what is this tri party repo tri party repo works similar to regular repo but there is an additional third party agent and involved in it this agent handle everything from collateral management to payment and settlement what is the role of this tri party agent first thing it is it ensures that the collateral meets the buyer credit and liquidity needs second thing is uh, it manages all the money transfer and paperwork and the last thing is revaluation now who can be a tri party agent so first thing is ccil and nse this ccil and nse they are approved tri party agent so they are approved by rbi to act like an agent and to become an agent the company need at least 25 crore capital experience in financial sector now why is tri party repo so important in the next slide we will see see it make borrowing and lending easier especially for corporate bond and reduce the hassle of maintaining collateral now let's talk about br brds that is bill discounting system bill rediscounting system it is a way for bank to raise fund while supporting business with liquidity so this brds help bank provide cash quickly by discounting genuine bill of exchange which has like iou in turns bank raise money through dupn what is this dupn derivative jujans promissory note now how does it work see it work um, when bank uh, when a business sets sell goods on credit it's it get a it get a bill of exchange right whenever a business sell goods on credit the business gets a bill of exchange the bank buy this bill at a discount giving the business cash up front now bank can then use this discounted bill to get fund by issuing a dupn bank issue this dupn when the bill mature the buyer of the goods pay back the bank and the bank repay the lender so now here are the key points first thing is eligible bills only bills that are unencumbered meaning not already placed and have a maximum tenor of 90 days uh, can be used and in an eligible bill bill from finance company or bill from internal business like house bill can don't qualify how it is paid the borrower receive the principal amount minus the interest up front and the lender get the full principal amount when the bill mature now effective yield the return for the lender is usually higher than the discount rate due to the interest rate being calculated on 365 days now dupn requirement bank must hold the eligible bill until the dupn mature if a bill mature early it has to be replaced with another eligible bill dupn are issued without needing to endorse or deliver the bill now that's bill rediscounting system lastly let's talk about ltro so what is this ltro all about ltro or long term repo operation was introduced to provide bank with long term fund at low interest rate the goal is to ensure bank have enough money to lend out and help the economy grow smoothly now what is the objective of this ltro this ltro help with mature help with maturity transformation and it enable durable liquidity assurance simply put it gives bank access to fund for a longer period so that they they can lend more efficiently next is tenor bank can borrow money from one year to three year under this scheme total amount this this took place first on february 17 and february 24 2020 with 25000 crore each now platform it is ltro or conducted through the e-covert platform at a fixed rate which is same as the current policy repo rate and bidding the minimum bid amount is one crore and if too many bids are received the allotment is made pro rata allotment now why is ltro important ltro allow bank to borrow at lower interest rate for longer period making it easier for them to provide loan to business you can enroll in our INIFS capsule program so let's begin with the chapter name is capital market and stock exchange so first thing first thing is regarding the capital market so think of capital market as a bridge it turns saving into investment and which helps the economy grow entrepreneur use this money for their business borrowing impact but borrowing impact how much profit they can make now this is this talk about the secondary market this is where previously issued stock and bonds are traded 
it is divided into two part one is called auction market like a stock exchange where buyer and seller meet second is dealer market this is called otc market where the trades are made directly between the parties the third thing is function so uh, function of the secondary market so um, it helps set prices for the security and monitoring management so it keeps an eye on how companies are running it encourages better management and decision next is bank role so bank help by managing account offering credit and ensuring transaction go smoothly now let's talk about capital sourcing and regulation company raises capital through equity share debenture and bonds the market is regulated by the cbi security exchange board of india ensuring rules are followed this market mainly deals with long term debt and the uh, equity market let's talk about the primary market so primary market is where company raise capital by selling new security either through public share or through private placement merchant bankers and uh, merchant banker and issue manager help companies through the process now bank role they help as as like an arranger underwriter and manage the bank uh, in the process of issuing share now let's talk about stock exchange in india so the india has four stock exchange first is bse that is called bombay stock exchange the oldest started in 1875 and was the first recognized by the cbi next is nsc a national stock exchange established in 1992 and is permanently recognized by cbi next is cse kolkata stock exchange established 1908 but is currently inactive although cbi recognized and the last is metropolitan stock exchange established in 2012 and it started trading in 2013 Now let's move on to the next slide. Let's talk about the demutualization of this stock exchange. What is this all about? This demutualization. It means stock exchanges are separated into ownership management and uh, uh, ownership management and trading right. Okay, this is called demutualization. For example, exchanges like BSE and NSE have undergone this process. Now brokers brokers trade on official system like BSE and NSE. Sub brokers. This question was asked last time. Okay, the broker trades on recognized system like NSE and BSE. Sub broker they work under the broker and must be registered with SEBI. Depository depository hold your share in electronic form. No physical paper, just digital record. Depository criteria examples in India. There are two examples: NSDL and CDSL. Sorry, and 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 CDSL. Now let's talk about the financial product in the in the stock market. So depository criteria is that he must be registered with the company act 1956. Now let's talk about the financial product in the stock market. The first thing is called equity, right? You can see depository in India. Now let's talk about this uh, CDSL 16 numeric data, NDSL 2 alpha plus 4 numeric data. Now financial product in the stock market equity. Equity means uh, owning a piece of the company that is called equity. Common in two form. The first is common and preference share. Preference share guest get fixed dividend, but no voting right. While common share might come with more risk and voting right. Right. So these are the futures. Now right issue. When a company offer more share to existing shareholder, that is called right issue. What is bonus share? It if free share from the free share from the company profit. That is called bonus share. Now let's talk about the preference share. Preference share in the fixed dividend, no voting, priority in liquidation, right? And redeemable share tenure is less than twenty years. And the, the second is uh, uh, the second is cumulative share. So if we talk about the cumulative share, then we have unpaid dividend accumulate, cumulative convertible share. It can be converted to equity after a set date and participating share, share in extra profit after fixed dividend. Now let's talk about the key instrument in the capital market. The first is security received. It is issued by the financial firm to big buyer. Usually to recover bad loans. Next is G C government security. It is bond issued by R B I on the behalf of the government with interest payment. Now let's talk about the debenture. Debenture is the company version of a bond offering fixed interest paid twice a year with the principal amount returned on redemption. These are the features of debenture. Let's talk about the bond. Bond are general debt certificate that also pay interest periodically and are fully repaid at maturity. Now T plus one trade settlement SEBI proposal. So what is T plus one? T plus one means trade settlement will be completed in 24 hour instead of currently 48 hour, right? T plus two means 48 hour. Why does it matter? Because it is it offer less risk for investor and faster payment. Now it 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 offer more liquidity for big investor and the retail investor are not affected much, but every one gets their money faster. What are the challenges? The challenges is that it need careful planning and changes to the market system. That's why shifting from T 
प्लस टू टू टी प्लस वन मैटर्स अलॉट नाउ वाट आर द टाइप ऑफ कैपिटल इशूज द फर्स्ट इज आई पी ओ वैन अ कंपनी सेल इट शेयर फॉर द फर्स्ट टाइम द नेक्स्ट इज एफ पी ओ अ लिस्टेड कंपनी ऑफर अ न्यू एक्जिस्टिंग शेयर नेक्स्ट इज राइट इशू वैन अ कंपनी गिव एक्जिस्टिंग शेयर होल्डर अ चांस टू बाय मोर शेयर दैट इज कॉल राइट इशू नेक्स्ट इज प्राइवेट प्लेसमेंट शेयर सोल्ड टू अ स्मॉल ग्रुप ऑफ इन्वेस्टर दैट इज कॉल प्राइवेट प्लेसमेंट नेक्स्ट इज क्यू आई पी क्यू आई पी इज अ स्पेशल टाइप ऑफ प्राइवेट प्लेसमेंट ओनली फॉर इंस्टीट्यूशनल बायर्स सो रिमेंबर दिस थिंग वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट फ्रॉम एग्जामेशन पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू सो वी हैव डिस्कस टी प्लस वन ट्रेड सेटलमेंट राइट नॉलेज टॉक अबाउट द सेवी एलिजिबिलिटी से सेवी एलिजिबिलिटी नॉर्म्स फॉर कैपिटल इशू फर्स्ट थिंग इज पब्लिक इशू सेवी फॉर पब्लिक इशू सेवी नॉर्म्स आर मैंडेटरी फॉर राइट और प्रेफरेंशियल इशू नो एनी सेवी नॉर्म्स रिक्वायर्ड फॉर क्यू आई पी ओनली फॉर लिस्टेड कंपनी विद पब्लिक सेवर ऑन एन एस सी एन बी सी सेवी नॉर्म्स आर रिक्वायर्ड नॉलेज टॉक अबाउट द डॉक्यूमेंट्स की डॉक्यूमेंट्स वट इज द की डॉक्यूमेंट पब्लिक इशू पब्लिक इशू आर ड्राफ्ट प्रोस्पेक्ट इज सबमिटेड टू सेवी नेक्स्ट इज राइट इशू राइट इशू ओवर फिफ्टी लैख रुपीज ड्राफ्ट लेटर इज फिल्ड विद द सेवी प्रेफरेंशियल और क्यू आई पी नो ऑफर डॉक्यूमेंट इज रिक्वायर्ड इफ यू टॉक अबाउट मर्चेंट बैंकर मेक्स योर एवरी थिंग फॉलो द रूल्स एंड द ऑफर डॉक्यूमेंट विथ एन इन्वेस्टमेंट डिटेल इज ओपन फॉर पब्लिक कंपनी फॉर ट्वेंटी वन डेज राइट सो ऑफर डॉक्यूमेंट फॉर पब्लिक कंपनी पब्लिक कॉमेंट्स इज ओपन फॉर ट्वेंटी वन डेज वॉट इज डी एच आर पी दिस क्वेश्चन वॉज आस्ट लास्ट टाइम आर एच पी नो प्राइज नंबर प्राइज बैंड रिलीज by ad and book building discover price final price in roc prospectus dhrp is submitted to sebi for public share offering for public share offering this dhrp is submitted to sebi it includes business information financial risk how the company will use the capital and the industry overview next is about the financial information this financial section help investor gauge whether the company is safe and profitable investment the list talk about risk factor the document also cover legal risk and industry trend what about the ipo price let's move to the next slide see ipo pricing if we talk about the pricing since 1992 so ipo pricing the key key criteria is fee pricing what does it mean it means that companies and merchant bankers set the price say we don't control it right issue types the first is called fixed price the price is set beforehand and the second is called big building it means it is the price discovered through bids now next topic is allotment in big build issue if we are if we are voluntary voluntary big build then 35% for retail investor RII 15% for non institutional investor NII and 50% for QIB including 5% reserve for mutual fund if if we talk about the compulsory big build then 75% goes to uh, QIB uh, 15% to NII and 10% to RII so this is that that's your quick guide to sebi norms ipo pricing and share allotment now let's talk about the investment categories in the next slide so first thing is RII that means retail investor so people who invest up to 2 lakh uh, in an ipo that is called retail investor next is QIB QIB is qualified institutional buyer okay these are large sebi approved institution like mutual fund next is NII NII is non institutional investor it include high net worth individuals and corporates next is anchor investor large QIB who invest 10 crore or more in an ipo now the, there are some key ipo terms to know what are the key ipo terms to know the first thing is called green shoe option extra share are issued to keep the share price stable after an ipo so after an ipo some extra share are issued to stabilize post listing price scsb that is self certified syndicate bank so bank that offer the asba asba means application supported by block amount meaning your ipo investment is blocked but not debited until the share are allotted next is ipo eligibility condition first thing is that to launch an ipo companies must meet certain requirement first is net tangible asset of at least 3 crore over the last 3 year average operating profit of 15 crore net worth of 1 crore for the last 3 year if we talk about fixed price issue in fixed price ipo the 50% of the 50% of the offer is reserved for the retail investor who invest up to 2 lakh we know already you have told you investor apply for less than 2 lakh and institutional investor like qib and non qib also gets a portion with the anchor investor uh, putting in large sum greater than 10 crore already we have discussed let's talk about the alternate uh, ipo all routes so if a company does not meet all eligibility criteria they can still go for an ipo through a book building process right where 75% is reserved for qib and after the issue they must meet 
इट्स एन एस ई लिस्टिंग लिस्ट दैट इज द पॉइंट राउ सो सो दैट्स अ क्विक रन डाउन ऑफ द इन्वेस्टर कैटेगरी एंड द आई पी ओ बेसिक नॉलेज टॉक अबाउट द आई पी ओ प्राइजिंग मैथड सो प्राइजिंग आई थिंक वी हैव कवर इट फ्री प्राइजिंग वॉलेंट्री बुक बिल्ड एन एस ई एलिजिबिलिटी लिस्ट ओके सो सी सिंस नाइनटीन नाइनटी टू देर इज अ फ्री प्राइजिंग इन आई पी ओ राइट ऑलरेडी हैव टोल यू देर इज अ फ्री प्राइजिंग इन आई पी ओ मीनस मीन्स कंपनी एंड मर्चेंट बैंक डिसाइड द प्राइज विदाउट सेबी फॉर्मूला एंड देर आर टू टाइप ऑफ प्राइजिंग फिक्स प्राइजिंग मीन द प्राइज इज सेट अप फ्रंट एंड बुक बिल्डिंग मीन्स प्राइज इज डिटरमाइन थ्रू बिड्स फ्रॉम इन्वेस्टर नाउ इफ यू टॉक अबाउट द शेयर अलॉटमेंट तो शेयर अलॉटमेंट इन द वॉलेंट्री बुक बिल्ड थर्टी फाइव परसेंट गोज टू आर आई आई थिंक इट इज रिपीटेड वंस राइट Now let's talk about the NSE listing criteria. To be listed on NSE, company needs 10 crore uh, post issue paid up capital and a total equity capitalization of at least 25 crore. What is ASBA? ASBA stand for application um, application supported by blocked amount. So it is a future of the retail investor for retail investor. It blocks the amount in your bank account until the share are allotted. To apply, you provide details like your name, pen, demat account number, and bid price. Now what is this safety net scheme? So let's discuss this safety. net net scheme 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 yeah, yeah, this is here. So this is is here here so safety that this scheme protect protect original original retail retail allotee allotee for 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 up to 1000 1000 share share it protect allotee forever 1000 share. and it and valid for six months from the time share are dispatched two thing you you have to to remember regarding this safety net scheme. So that's your quick guide to the entire topic you will watch this video till the end let's begin with the first topic see we will discuss two key ty- types of investment in India the first is called government government securities and the second is called debt security so what is it all about see government securities are super important for indian financial development and think of them as a way the government raises money to fund its expenses and um, like covering deficit or managing cash gaps there there are three main types of it central government security treasury bill and state development loan now or uh, anyone registered in india can invest and these security are held in a special account at the rbi i call sgl account big investor like bank and insurance company and even uh, non non resident buy them and usually they are sold at a set value which is rupees 100 through auction and the government pays interest every 6 month the government pay interest every 6 month now list move on to the debt security the debt security uh, are de- identified by two thing the first thing is their maturity date and the second thing is their coupon rate that is also called interest rate for example you might hear something called 7.99% government of india 2027 this just means that bond pay 7.99% interest and it mature in 2027 so these securities are highly liquid in the these security are highly liquid it means you can easily buy or sell them in the market they are issued through rbi auction and even a small retail investor can participate without competing in the big big bids the maturity can range from less than a year to over 40 years so we so this is about the debt security that's a quick rundown on government and debt security in india easy right if you have any question related to it feel free to drop the message in the comment section now let's move on to the next topic that is our focusing on treasury bill sdl and how bonds are valued banks and insurance company hold different types of government security right so bank usually go from short term short term government security preferably for uh, up to 10 years while insurance company uh, prefer long term investment then there are treasury bills and uh, uh, on uh, which are short term money market instrument which less than a year maturity then there there comes sdl that is called state development loan which are issued by the state government also come with the fixed uh, uh, interest paid every 6 month these are traded over the phone or through an rbi trading system uh, that is called nds om where, where the government security treasury bill and sdl also can be traded that is called nds om now nds om and uh, when issued market nds om is a platform negotiated dealing system is a platform where bank primary dealer insurance companies and financial institution can trade the market is open monday to uh, friday 9 am to 5 pm with settlement handled by the clearing corporation of india there also when issued market there are also when issued market where securities can be traded even before they are officially issued This market is only open to entities eligible for auction 
लाइक बैंक और इंश्योरेंस कंपनीज इंडिविजुअल इंक्लूडिंग एन आर आई एंड एच यू एफ दैट इज हिंदू अनडिवाइडेड फैमिलीज एंड एन आर आई कैन पार्टिसिपेट बट ओनली बाई टेकिंग लॉन्ग पोजिशन बेसिकली बाइंग नॉट सेलिंग लॉन्ग पोजिशन मीन्स दे आर बेसिकली बाइंग नॉट सेलिंग बिफोर द सिक्योरिटीज आर ऑफिशियली अवेलेबल नॉन लेट्स टॉक अबाउट समथिंग कॉल्ड बॉन्ड वैल्यूएसन अ बॉन्ड वैल्यू डिपेंड्स ऑन थ्री की थिंग्स इट फेस वैल्यू द सेकेंड इज मैच्योरिटी डेट एंड द थर्ड थिंग इज कूपन रेट कूपन रेट यू नो इट इज अ फिक्स इंटरेस्ट रेट इट पेज मार्केट इंटरेस्ट रेट हैव अ बिग इन्फ्लुएंस ऑन द बॉन्ड प्राइस इफ मार्केट रेट गोज अप If market rate goes up, the bond price drops, and if market rate goes down, the bond price goes up. Even though the coupon rate stay constant, a bond price adjusts based on these rate change because its value is based on future cash flow it promises. That is the basic of trading platform bond market and how bond price work. Now let's dive into how government securities are auctioned. so that's what we have discussed regarding the how market price market price and market rate and coupon rate varies let's talk about the bond valuation when the market interest rate is lower than the bond coupon rate market rate is lower than the coupon rate the bond price increases it goes up the value of bond is calculated by adding the present value of future coupon and the face value of the bond to calculate bond price we use the formula that factors in the present value and the discount factor to cal so uh, there are few key bond theorem to remember see when interest is that uh, if the bond price uh, um, when the rate interest rate goes up the bond price falls and when the interest rate goes down the bond price rises first point second point is that bond price rises when more interest rate fall than it drops when interest rate rise next thing is a longer a bond maturity the more sensitive it is its price to the change in interest rate and the last is the bond with a lower coupon rate are more sensitive to the interest rate change than the bond with higher coupon rate assuming both have the same maturity right these are four bond theorem which you have to keep in mind now auction of government security government security are issued through auction conducted by the rbi there are two type of auction the first first is called multiple price auction where the different winner pay different prices and the second is uniform price auction where all winner pay the same prices these auctions are open to residents non residents companies fpi foreign portfolio investor and even central bank non resident in investment are governed by the fema regulation the minimum investment in rupees 10000 and it's multiple and bids are play are are placed through uh, through the rbi ecoware system the bidding is based on um, on either price or yield uh, with a maximum interest rate or maximum or minimum price set by the rbi and the government of india this is about the auction of government security and uh, uh, let's talk about the methods which is used green shoe option methods is used up to notified ceiling now let's talk about the primary dealer primary dealer are the key player in the government security uh, they participate in the auction where lower yield bids means a higher price is paid for the security right lower yield means higher premium paid bids that goes above, above the cut off yield um or below the cut off price gets rejected now uh, retail investor can also participate indirectly through non competitive bids which means they don't have to worry about the pricing now the rbi and the government of india decide how much of the total issue get allocated to retail investor now th this is decided by the rbi maximum percentage of the total issue this is about the primary dealer they can buy and sell government security now let's talk about the primary dealer primary dealer was introduced way back in 1995 to help with the government security market and these dealers are responsible for buying and selling government securities and they follow a strict rule around turnover around bidding around underwriting and secondary market rules pds can be subsidiary of the bank financial institution or even portfolio investor ppfi now let's talk about fimda primary dealer and fimda see nbfc is non banking financial companies can also apply to become primary dealer but they must be registered for at least one year the rbi decide which institution can become primary dealer based on the needs of the market and whether the applicant is suitable now primary dealer has three main roles let's discuss in the next slide so what are the roles that they first participate in the auction they underwrite government security and they provide firm 
or buy sell codes to keep the market liquid if you want to get great insight into all of these you can enroll in our INIFS video course program where I have explained each and everything in detail now list then finally there is FIMDA FIMDA is called fixed income money market and derivative association of India which help guide and set practice for primary dealer and the bond market so that's the quick rundown of primary market and their role in the market now let's talk about the PDS type. So uh, FIMDA stands for Fixed Income Money Market and Derivative Association of India. It is a self-regulatory body that oversees the fixed income and derivative market in India. It works with the regulators and uh, it develops the market. It provides training and sets best practices for the industry. It can also help in arbitration and standardized documentation to ensure a smooth operation in the bond market. Primary dealer which we talked about earlier are either banks primary dealer or a standalone primary dealer and they all follow FIMDA guidelines. Now let's talk about the retail direct scheme that is called RDS which allow retail investor to, uh, to easily invest in the government security online. This is how it work. First you register online using a simple form and an OTP so authentication. After successfully registration you get an RDG account that is called retail direct guilt account where you use to buy security. Next come um, you can participate in the primary market by submitting non-competitive bids. Just remember you can only place one bid per security payments can be made through net banking or upi and if there is a refund it will be credited back to your bank account once the transaction is complete the securities are created to your rdg account on settlement date so retail direct scheme is a great way for individual investor or a hindu undivided family to invest in government securities with maturity of up to 10 years so maturity is almost 10 years and uh, Payments are made online and once the security are credited, uh, they are blocked until the settlement date. It is simple and convenient option for retail investor to enter the market. Now so this, is, this is all about the retail direct scheme. 10 years you can see available security. Now let's talk about corporate bond market. See uh, if the corporate bond market in India is still in India, it's in early stage but is developing quickly. Right now uh, finance company dominate the space. Most Indian firm is still rely heavily on bank financing but corporate bond offer many benefits like like low financing debts like better asset liability management like a way to spread out the risk and it helps company assess long-term funding and manage their capital more efficiently. The main issuer in the corporate bond market are public sector enterprises, private companies and house finance companies state undertaking. The pricing of this bond is usually based on a spread over government security reflecting the risk involved. Now bond rating help investor assess the safety of a bond with AAA being the highest rating and D being the default rating. Anything rating BBB or higher is considered investment grade. Right. Now, fixed, there are different types of bond available. The first is called fixed uh, interest bond that pays a set fixed interest rate. The next is floating rate bond. Floating rate bond, you know, where the interest rate change. And the last is called zero coupon bond. So the zero coupon bond are where they don't pay interest, but they are sold at the uh, discount. Bond have been in demat form since 2002. That is called dematerialization, which means they have electronically stored instead of physical paper. Now, corporate bond can be traded through the institutional broker or direct trade uh, directly between the buyer and seller there is also something called ICD which means intercorporate deposit which are short term loans between the company these are in unsecured and high and high interest rate that depends on company credit rating primary dealer have limits on how much they can borrow in the ICD market which is 150% of their net on fund FIMDA the same body that oversees the government security also looks after the fixed income market including corporate bond plus the retail direct scheme by RBI allows the individual investor to participate in the market easily. So in short corporate bond market and ICD are important part of Indian debt market. They help company manage debt more flexibly and giving investor option beyond bank financing. To solve any question from this particular unit, the unit is foreign exchange market. So let's begin with, did you know that every day a whooping 6.6 .6 trillion dollar is traded in the forex market? It is a global market, right? And uh, with participants from all over the world, there is no borders. And most trading, most trades happen over the counter. That is called OTC. That means directly between two parties without going through a central exchange. New trends are emerging like FX retail where regular people can participate. Now, what exactly does the Forex cover? The term Forex cover according to the FEMA, that is Foreign Exchange Management Act, it includes foreign currency, 
deposits credits balance draft etc now the forex market is started to grow as as countries began trading internationally right creating a market that operates across 19 hour time zone the major currency here are us dollar euro gbp great britain pound yen cad aud chf inr including our very own inr in india the forex market took off due to rising trade and reduced transaction so the it, it growth growth of trade and removal of restriction that is why this forex market took off and interbank market was established in the 1971 the rbi allowed intraday trading in 1978 intraday trading was allowed by rbi in 1978 and by 1991 rates become more unified as you can see in our next slide that uh, uh, intraday trading was enabled by rbi in 1978 and rate become more unified in 1991 plus since 1994 the indian currency has become convertible for current account transaction try to understand it is not fully convertible currency but it is convertible for current account transaction there are two type of account one is called current account right mm-hmm. for uh, and the other is called capital account right so for current account transaction indian currency is fully convertible but for capital account transaction it is not fully convertible that's why indian currency is not freely convertible lastly the forex market has become super liquid which means there is always someone to trade with making it attractive to the investor worldwide now let's talk about the market participants so today let's dive into who participate in the forex market and the and, and, and we will discuss a few key terms you should know first off the market is 24 hour meaning it is constantly active so participant need to be quick with the response next is regulation regulations are flexible to support future planning and services charge comes in the form of bid and ask spread what is a spread a spread is nothing but the difference between the buying and selling price of currency is called spread now forex market often value of offer one value quote for stability and traders often track trends for long term now changes in currency value create opportunity for investment that means currency change investment opportunity is created right and what about credit leverage credit leverage is also common meaning you can trade with borrowed fund using the agreed ma- agreed margin you can bo- you can uh, bo- you can trade with borrowed fund using the agreed margin that is called credit credit leverage now let's look at the cre- key player the first is commercial and investment bank they trade on the behalf of themselves and their client now comes broker broker are the intermediary which connect buyer and seller for a fee next comes central bank the central bank issue currencies and sometimes step in to stabilize the market that is called currency issuance and market intervention then comes sovereign market they invest in the foreign asset next come hedge fund and, and investment entities they aim for a speculative returns and lastly is corporate sme and institutional investor so they are active participant too now let's talk about libor and arr what is this libor all about this libor is london interbank um, um, of uh, market rate offered rate right so uh, this was uh, once the go to benchmark for interest rate but uh, but is being phased out due to some irregularities it is being replaced by arr arr is means what alternative reference rate which are more stable and market driven now uh, india is exposed to libor through loans and uh, derivatives so adjusting to these new rates is a huge focus now lastly we have fedi so you can see mapping to arr challenges libor termination preparation this is one of the major challenges now what is fedi fedi is foreign exchange dealer association of india so uh, it was founded in 1958 and they regulate they advise they accredit uh, and forex broker and bank in india they also provide training um, and uh, training sets guidelines and work closely with rbi to stabilize the market now they have been collaborate with institution like fimda uh, and uh, fbil and iba right so the guidelines training broker accreditation these are the activities now let's talk about the next topic that is our foreign exchange uh, legislation evolution let's move to the next slide and let's discuss this topic foreign exchange legislation ev- um, evolution let's talk about how foreign exchange law have evolved in india and the role of regulatory body today so first of all it, it all started in 1947 um, uh, that, that Uh, with the with the establishment of foreign exchange regulation act that is called fera so introduced after the economic war the law was around for 26 year this fera law was around for 26 year regulating all the all things forex but by 1991 
by 1991 things started changing with the uh, things started changing with india's economic liberalization foreign investment was allowed and uh, reforms were recommended by the tarapur committee remember this this tarapur committee is very important this was asked now by 1999 the uh, fema that is called foreign exchange management act it has replaced the fera and uh, fema focus more on managing foreign exchange and making trade easier now it applies to all of india and even cover offenses that happen abroad now fema is structured into seven chapter and 49 section covering everything from forex rule to penalties next is a regulatory body for fema let's see who regulate fema the main body include rbi central government and the enforcement directorate forex department capital market division the enforcement directorate makes sure that fema is followed and if someone break the rule at the gating authority send notice for violation that the gating authority send notice for violation now if someone want to appeal a decision they can go to the special director or the appellate tribunal and of course the rbi plays a key role in controlling foreign exchange and authorizing a special entity is known as authorized person to deal in the forex now let's uh, break down some key provision of the fema uh, and let's talk about the fx retail program by rbi see under fema the rbi issued guidelines and rule through the ap dir circular and master circular let's look at a few important section section 3 you can't deal in foreign exchange unless you go through an authorized dealer that means it's prohibited for is dealing except through an authorized person section 4 indian resident are restricted from holding foreign exchange asset abroad it restricts indian resident from holding foreign asset uh, foreign forex asset abroad now next is uh, um, current uh, uh, current account transaction rule was introduced in 2000 to regulate every forex transaction next is section 6 here capital account transaction are allowed in section 6 right and uh, meaning you can invest abroad section 7 that means uh, exporter must declare their earning to the rbi section 8 if you bring foreign currency to india you must repatriate it within a specific time now for authorized person uh, like forex dealer or money changer section 10 and section 12 uh, outline their duty making sure everything stays above bro above board now what happen that you can see responsibility for dealer money changer offshore and what What happen if you break the rule under section 13 and section number 15? There are penalties, and this can be handled by the adjudicating authority. Now, section 36 and th- section 37 investigate any violation of the FEMA and ensure that all regulation are follow. Now, let's talk about FX retail platform. Very, very important from examination point of view. See, uh, lastly, let's talk about FX retail pro- platform, which was introduced by RBI. So, this platform is designed to improve the pricing for retail forex user. As you can see, return improving pricing for retail forex user and. Uh, uh by offering transparency competition and better pricing now it is web based system for us uh, usd inr uh, um, uh, uh, trades like cash storm spot forward Condition is up to 13 month, right? Customer can pick any bank for base rate, and there is no transaction limit. No transaction limit. You can choose any bank for base rate. Now let's talk about this ADR and JDR. Now in the uh, let's talk about depository receipt and some. some important development in the forex market first of all what are the what is this de- de- depository receipt a depository receipt re- represent the equity of a foreign company but is traded on a local exchange so the main thing is equity of a foreign company and is traded on a local exchange right now adr stand for american depository receipt so it is issued by us bank Priced in USD and traded on US exchange. Next is GDR. GDR is Global Depository Receipt. It is in, it is issued by European bank, priced in Euro uh, or other European currency and traded on European exchange. Next is IDR. These are these are also called inter- International Depository Receipt. They are traded on global exchanges. Some GDR are can also be denominated in the currency of the issuing country, right? Some GDR can also be denominated in the currency of the issuing country, right? So they so why are DR DR are important what are the benefits of it why this depository receipt are important because they enable global trade and cross border investment next is they help company access more capital increase the liquidity of the share and attract international investor and finally for investor dr provide opportunity to invest in forex company without facing the risk of directly entering foreign market they 
also offer diversification now let's move on to the key player in the forex market so the daily turnover in the forex market is massive around 6.6 billion dollar already discussed the arr uh, that is sofr and soni uh, have replaced the old lever benchmark ensuring more level transaction now next is fema fema govern all forex transaction in india while fedai fema govern all can kindly go through now let's begin first thing first is that financial market are all linked right like if we talk about the forex market if we talk about the credit market as you can see the financial market is all linked like uh, money market forex security credit derivative insurance pension when one market moves other feels the impact and this is called coupling effect this is also called the contagion effect and it can spread problem across the globe now technologically like e payments right uh, so you can see it uh, market uh, capital mobility and facilitator is unrestricted market access so this contagion effect is another important thing now technology like e payment communication and new monetary policy have changed how this market work you can see like uh, communication reduces arbitrage it boost our cross border fund now the monetary policy has shifted uh, it is easier to move money across border and global rules help make market more competitive global standard harmonize enhancing competition why does this matter because it is stop price gap you can see it is stop price gap and uh, it ensure efficiency and lets different market serve various needs right and uh, it helps country becoming global and regionally finance center country that embrace this can become major financial hub boosting their growth so through things we have seen is that technologies adoption of technologies it has helped in real terms and the linking of financial market called coupling effect and contagion effect so positive aspect also there are pros also and there are cons also now let's move on to the next slide and let's see the financial market involve many players what are the major participants like bank nbfcs mutual fund insurance mortgage firm long term financial institutions in india reforms have made market more efficient reduces arbitrage increase competition deepening market india is also opening up to the world that is called global integration Gl allowing global capital to flow more freely and uh, if we talk about this market integration so how does integration happen this integration happen at three level the first level is domestic level the domestic level means within the country it link segment aid portfolio diversification then the next is global level across borders open market to cross border services and at regional level like the acu uh, that is called asian clearing union let's talk about acu acu was set up in 1974 by ascap to settle payment between countries and uh, in the region it help reduce cost how okay it help reduce cost it is safe foreign exchange and it has support trade and uh, this is main three points you have to keep regarding acu and it function it lacks like a multilateral payment offset debit credit and members are this question can be asked who are the member bangladesh bhutan india iran maldives myanmar nepal pakistan and sri lanka question can be asked who cannot be a member now let's talk about this financial integration the financial integration promote trades economic of scale and competition now however it comes with a risk depending on how developed the market are and how much integration occur level of integration and financial development domestically the integration help mobilize saving it uh, it absorb shock and it also boost growth so this integration this domestic financial integration it improve governance it boost growth and stability globally it allows risk sharing and improve efficiency but can also lead to issues like capital volatile capital flow these are the risk because of the financial integration direct investment if you want to get detailed knowledge about this what is this volatile capital flow you can uh, watch our enroll in our video courses where i have explained each and every topic in detail now direct investment are more stable but exchange rate and inflation poses risk exchange rate issues inflation all of them poses risk policies like capital account convertibility must balance these challenges hedging can protect risk against exchange rate volatility but it is costly as it was seen in the past crisis yes obviously hedging can reduce this exchange rate volatility but the main factor is that cost measures right now let move on to the money market in india in india the money market is impacted by the rate changes and the rbi role in managing liquidity 
द वेटेड एवरेज कॉल रेट दैट इज कॉल्ड डब्ल्यू एस सी आर द वेटेड एवरेज कॉल रेट एंड द गवर्नमेंट सिक्योरिटी यील्ड रिफ्लेक्ट हाउ बैंक नीड लिक्विडिटी स्पेशली एट द फिजिकल ईयर एंड सो डब्ल्यू एस सी आर स्प्रेड वाइड एंड एट द फिजिकल ईयर एंड एंड गवर्नमेंट सिक्योरिटी यील्ड ट्रैक मनी मार्केट रेट लिंक टू रेपो रेट आर नाउ बैंक्स आर की रोल प्लेज अ की रोल इन पॉलिसी पास थ्रू वाया लैंडिंग रेट नाउ If we talk about RBI monetary policy, so RBI monetary policy affect lending rate through factors like competitions, inflations, exchange rate flexibility. So through, through through these factors, RBI monetary rate influences uh, affect lending rate. Corporate and government bond rate are linked as they both follow interest rate. You can see corporate versus government bond positive correlation due to interest rate. In the credit market, bank lending plays a big role. but non banking financial uh, finance also matters however some challenges like rigid de rigid deposit rate you let you see some challenges like rigid deposit rate like uh, informal finance also slow down the impact of the policy now let's move on to the repo rate as you can see the repo rate directly influence lending rate by affecting the cost of fund fund cost right in in capital market bonds and money market usually move together bonds and money market moves together in the capital market while equity moves in opposite direction equity moves in opposite direction remember it higher bond yield so try to understand if bond yield is higher okay so bond higher bond yield it pushes the stocks down it pushes the stock down and lower yield boosts them so you can see rising bond yield stock lower stock indices falling yield boosts them now in the forex market you can see opportunity cost higher bond yield cause equity under performance you can see bond and equity moves opposite as, as i have told you just now now global coupling domestic market aligning with international center like nifty 50 and snp correlation as the, as the international center moves so as domestic market move this called global sub coupling in the forex market stock market performance impact currency right so when forex investor pull out the currency weaken and the when the market rises it strengthen simple correlation as i'm by as a, for example a strong nifty 50 strengthen the inr while a weak nifty 50 weaken the inr integrated treasury operation help optimize funding between money and forex market you can see this interconnectedness of forex market integrated treasury option it manages funding you can see nifty 50 and usd inr correlation a strong nifty 50 strengthen inr weak nifty 50 weaken inr so there is a negative correlation right and stock market decline causes fii withdraw foreign institutional investor withdraw weakening currency market boom attract fii strengthening currency so you can see interconnectedness of forex market right stock market and forex market closely interconnected now optimization improve asset liability management exploit arbitrage so in the past forex and treasury operation were separate but now it has interconnected this was registered in historical context that means forex handle separately from treasury but now they are combined as we have seen in the previous slide that you can see when the when the our um, currency weakening stock market rely on fii investment stock market decline cause fii withdrawal right so now they are connected this change was driven by interest rate deregulation and exchange rate liberalization forex derivatives derivative growth and advanced in technology as integrated treasury focus on managing reserves like crr slr investing in securities government and non government securities and optimizing the balance sheet these three things are the main focus of treasury operation right so it also handles liquidity integrated treasury also handle liquidity it also optimize the balance sheet right it also manages uh, uh, market risk and look for arbitrage opportunity asset liability management a uh, liquidity and fund management these are the functions of integrated treasury question can be asked reserve management liquidity management asset liability management risk management right also it gains profit from arbitrage in short integrated treasury operation help manage fund more efficiently ensuring better performance and when in fact refers to how economic crisis spread across region due to interconnected financial system since our financial system is interconnected so if one market fail it can create ripple effect impacting other market globally for example in 1997 southeast crisis um, uh, asian crisis excess dollar denominated debt led to economic trouble spreading across asia and beyond on other instance is taper tantrum uh, in 2013 where the us reduced its bond purchase causing emerging market currency to drop 
सो द इंटर कनेक्टिवनेस ऑफ ग्लोबल एंड इंडियन फाइनेंशियल मार्केट ब्रिंग बोथ बेनिफिट एंड रिस्क डिपेंडिंग ऑन द लेवल ऑफ इंटीग्रेशन एंड टू सॉल्व दैट पार्टिकुलर क्वेश्चन सो नाउ लेट्स बिगिन फर्स्ट थिंग इज लेट्स क्विकली ब्रेक डाउन वाट डेरेवेटिव आर एंड देयर हिस्ट्री सो विदाउट द जारगन सो सो वट आर डेरेवेटिव सी डेरेवेटिव आर लाइक फाइनेंशियल टूल्स दैट गेट देयर वैल्यू फ्रॉम समथिंग दैट इज कॉल्ड अंडरलाइंग एसेट लाइक अ स्टॉक like a um, commodity or interest rate right so these are some underlying asset a stock commodity and interest rate now people use them to protect against risk hedging risk or make a profit by betting on future prices if you talk about the types you have you have got uh, one traded directly between the people that is called otc uh, and and on exchange like forward futures options and swap which are traded on exchange so one one side there is it is traded on for otc and other side it is traded on exchange now uh, way back in the history people traded goods without money so if you talk about the history you can see scr in 1956 defined in section uh, the it, it, it is defined in section 2 sub sub section 2 ac and rbi value tied to underlying minimum investment so if you talk about the history of it way back in history people traded goods without money which was a kind of like the earliest form of contract now in 1600 bc as you can see uh, a guy named thales used something called a call option so thales used a something called call option uh, with a with olive oil fast forward to japan uh, in 1700 they created the first modern future machine for rice future market for rice now in india the first derivative market started in 1875 with bombay cotton trade remember it this may be asked By 2000, SEBI allowed future and option for big indexes. SEBI approved derivative based on LC Gupta committee. Remember this committee name, and it, it was based on the big indices like Nifty and Sensex, and even for individual stock. Some key milestone in India include you can see BSE Sensex option, uh, the launch of Sensex option in 2001, with BSE Sensex in uh, June 4, 2001, and individual security option in July 2001, and uh, Nifty launches in uh, June 12, June 2000. right so that's a quick overview of the derivative hope that's clear it up to you now let's talk about the underlying asset in the previous slide we have seen the derivative is der value derived from underlying asset so you know, what are underlying asset they are basically the things that have given derivative their values some example includes commodities like grain coffee precious metals like gold and silver natural resources uh, um, currencies like foreign exchange natural res resources bonds from government and corporate debts or company and then after comes uh, stock indices that uh, track the overall market everything like oil and gas um, fall under this now when it's come to trading derivative there are two main types of market right the first market is called exchange traded market so these are like public market this you can think exchange traded market like a public market so everything here is just and rise you can see written everything here is just and rise and uh, uh, highly regulated with lots with lots of transparency they are safer and uh, you have even market maker to ensure there is always someone to trade with so they are highly transparent and regulated now let's talk about the otc otc means over the counter market they are basically private deal they are what kind of private deal they are much more flexible and uh, uh, and riskier since they are less regulated so this otc is less regulated after the 2008 financial crisis you know about this 2008 financial crisis so after the 2008 financial crisis uh, uh, the otc market faced more more scrutiny so that is the quick snapshot and uh, let's talk about the function of derivative so uh, let's dive into some key function of derivative and break down forward contract and future first derivative do few important thing the first thing they do is price discovery they help figure out the right price for the asset the next thing is risk transfer they transfer risk uh, from one party to the another next come risk management they help protect against unexpected price rise which we call hedging so when i say hedging it means unexpected price rise then after it come low cost they make trading cheaper then after come market access it means they open doors to market that are hard to get into then they are highly leveraged meaning you can trade with less money compared to other investment now let's talk about the forward contract 
सी अ फॉरवर्ड कॉन्ट्रैक्ट इज एन एग्रीमेंट टू ट्रेड समथिंग लाइक फॉर एन एक्सचेंज एट द फ्यूचर डेट इम्पोर्टर ऑफ एन यूज दिस टू लॉक इन एक्सचेंज रेट इफ यू कैलकुलेट अ फॉरवर्ड कॉन्ट्रैक्ट यू हैव टू फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल टेल द स्पॉट रेट एंड देन आफ्टर यू हैव टू इंटरेस्ट रेट ओवर टाइम द पर्पज ऑफ दिस फॉरवर्ड कॉन्ट्रैक्ट इज दैट इम्पोर्टर वॉन्ट टू लॉक इन द रेट नाउ कस्टमाइजेशन टर्म नेगोशिएटेड ओ टी सी दिस कॉन्ट्रैक्ट आर कस्टमाइज एंड नेगोशिएटेड प्राइवेटली लाइक ओ टी सी दिस इज ऑवर द काउंटर प्रोडक्ट फॉरवर्ड कॉन्ट्रैक्ट विथ नो इनिशियल पेमेंट एंड एंड दे मस्ट भी फुलफिल्ड पेमेंट मेस्ट भी फुलफिल्ड वैन द कॉन्ट्रैक्ट एंड मस्ट सेटल एट द मेच्योरिटी नेक्स्ट कम्स फ्यूचर एंड ऑब्लीगेशन पार्टीज मस्ट फुलफिल द टर्म इंडिया जेन्यून अंडरलाइंग रिक्वायर एंड कैंसलेशन एंड रूबिंग रीबुकिंग आर अलॉड विथ जेन्यून अंडरलाइंग नाउ इफ यू टॉक अबाउट द फ्यूचर फ्यूचर आर लाइक फॉरवर्ड कॉन्ट्रैक्ट बट सनराइज एंड ट्रेडेड ऑन एक्सचेंज राइट सो दे कैन दे कैन इन्वॉल्व एनी थिंग फ्रॉम फाइनेंशियल इंस्ट्रूमेंट टू कॉमोडिटीज फाइनेंशियल इंस्ट्रूमेंट टू कॉमोडिटीज ऑल आर इंक्लूडेड विथ करेंसी फ्यूचर यू एग्री टू एक्सचेंज अ करेंसी एट अ फिक्स प्राइज इन द फ्यूचर एंड जस्ट लाइक फॉरवर्ड फ्यूचर्स आर लीगली बाइंडिंग सो दैट इज कॉल्ड करेंसी फ्यूचर सो दैट इज द बेसिक्स ऑफ डेरेवेटिव फॉरवर्ड एंड फ्यूचर एंड नाउ लेट जस्ट मूव सो फ्रेंड्स इफ यू वॉन्ट पी डी एफ ऑफ सच टाइप ऑफ लेक्चर यू कैन इनरॉल इन आवर कैप्सूल प्रोग्राम इन कैप्सूल प्रोग्राम वी ऑफर यू सच कॉन्साइज पी डी एफ विच हेल्प यू विच हेल्प यू ग्रेटली इन रिवाइजिंग द कंटेंट इन शॉर्ट स्पैन ऑफ टाइम एंड यू कैन कंटेंट रिवाइज द कंटेंट मल्टीपल नंबर ऑफ टाइम्स ऑल्सो वी प्रोवाइड एम सी क्यूज सो फॉर मोर डिटेल रिगार्डिंग द कैप्सूल प्रोग्राम यू कैन व्हाट्सएप यू ऑन दिस पार्टिकुलर नंबर नाउ लेट्स टॉक अबाउट द फॉरवर्ड वर्सेज फ्यूचर कॉन्ट्रैक्ट obviously uh, we do, you know they this future contract are stand rise and also they have a fixed maturity right so uh, uh, let's compare future and forward contract and let then drive into interest rate future and option see uh, futures are traded on exchange and uh, and read futures require an upfront margin and their value is updated daily that is called mark to market and uh, forward contract are private deal as we all know and uh, their otc is over the over the counter with no margin required and you can trade them 24 into 7 in forward you know the other who the other party it but that means you know the counter party but in future you don't know the counter party for example let me give an example a company locks in 1 million dollar a company locks in 1 million dollar at 75.50 inr per usd in forward contract so they want gain if the dollar appreciate right now let's next up comes interest rate future or we call it fra fra forward rate agreement this contract are about exchanging future interest payment so main thing is here future interest payment so we will exchange future interest payment here right <coughs> now if you expect the rate to what i what rate interest rate if you expect the rate to rise uh, you can you buy an fra to hedge so if you if you expect that the interest rate will rise in the future so what you do uh, you buy an fra you buy an forward rate agreement to hedge right uh, and if you expect rate to fall if you expect that interest rate will fall you sell fra right this is the basic concept now the cool thing is you are only dealing with the notional amount no principal commitment only notional amount is involved right no need to commit the principal lastly let's talk about the options and some more details like example you can see 3 into 6 fra this is how it is written forward rate agreement and in which case we have to buy in which case we have to sell you have to see this okay now let's talk about the option so option give you the right but not the obligation to buy or sell something at a fixed price before it expires so it gives you a right it not give you obligation to buy or sell something at a fixed price before expiry so the asset like a stock commodities bonds right uh, that the option is based on it's called the underlying now uh, there are two types of option call option and uh, and uh, the, the second is called put option let's discuss these two types of option in the next slide so option premium is the price you pay for the option and uh, there is something called a strike price right okay so uh, call or call option gives you the right to buy so this buy right to buy is given by the call option and put option give you the right to sell so sell is given by the put option right now if you talk about some key terms like option premium means the price you pay for the option a strike price the fixed buy sell price is called a strike price expiry date that means when the option expire the option holder is the buyer and the option writer is the seller who must deliver if the option is exercised who is option holder who is option writer option holder is the buyer right by who buy the option and option writer is one uh, who is the seller who must deliver if the option is exercised now let's comes to the next slide and let's discuss american versus european option see um uh, uh, first let's talk about option american option means you can exercise this any time before they expire you can exercise this option any time before they expire uh, and european option means you can only exercise them 
them at expiry let me give you an example so if you have an european call option on infosys so your profit is the market price minus the strike price and the premium right since it is european option so it means you can only exercise them expiry so what what will be the market price you can see for example infosys you have european call option your profit will be market price minus strike price minus premium now let's move on to the swaps see swap is when two party exchange financial instrument or cash flow so two party exchanges financial instrument two party exchanges cash flow then swap happen there are of different type the first is called currency swap you exchange principal and interest in different currency that is called currency swap exchanging principal and interest in different currency is called currency swap and it is very great for cheap borrowing it is very great for cheap borrowing in your home currency if you are borrowing cheap in home currency this is very great currency swap is very great and um, swapping it for foreign currency right and now let's talk about interest rate swap you exchange interest rate payment that is called interest rate swap then comes credit default swap you transfer the risk of credit default so there is a risk of credit default and you transfer that particular risk and this is called credit default swap so uh, may I, uh, so i am giving you an example example of the credit default swap so an indian and american subsidiary could swap their low interest payment and principal in their respective currency so this is an example of uh, interest credit default swap so we have discussed currency swap where principal and interest in different currencies exchange interest rate swap where interest rate cash flow is exchange credit default swap when credit risk is exchange now you can see currency swap benefit and now let's discuss irs irs means interest rate swap in detail already i have told you in the case of interest rate swap you exchange interest rate payment so in the interest rate swap what you do you ex you exchange interest rate payment on a notional amount there are two type first is fixed to floating so fixed to floating means you exchange a fixed interest rate for a floating one so you are exchanging a fixed interest rate and you are taking floating interest rate in return and the second is called floating interest rate so floating to fixed means what you are exchanging you swap a floating interest rate for a fixed one so people use this to reduce cost or hedge against interest rate movement so that, that let me give you an example like you can see a company might swap a fixed deposit for a floating loan you can see this is fcnr deposit which is fixed and it it, it is trying to it is trying to um, uh, swap a, a fixed deposit for a floating rate loan so this is a type of floating to fixed when i told you that exchanging floating for fixed right now if we talk about fixed to floating like fixed rate bond versus floating corporate financing so our company might swap fixed rate bond for floating rate corporate financing so this is example of fixed to floating let's talk about the cds so cds means credit default swap and what is cds it is basically a contract that help an investor protect against the risk of someone not paying back their loan or bond also known as default so cds is a contract that help the an investor protect against risk of someone not paying back their loan so suppose someone is not paying back the loan obviously there is a risk and this risk to protect against the risk the contract that help an investor is called cds credit default swap right uh, so how it works let me discuss so the buyer of a cds buy premium so buyer purchases cds the buyer of the premium pay premium like insurance fee right premium payment is paid like insurance fee the seller of the cds promises to reimburse the buyer if the borrower default so if the borrower default uh, the the seller will reimburse so the risk of default is transferred to the cds seller but if it is not but is not eliminated completely if the borrower is riskier the cds premium are on higher right so now let's talk about the rbi guideline in 2021 rbi releases a guideline releases draft guideline to uh, allow retail user to hedge against credit risk in india so as you can see this this was rbi guideline uh, which was for the, regarding the cds as you can see in the in the case of cds there are three parties borrower cds buyer and cds seller right and rbi drafted guideline in february 2021 uh, which uh, which is related to which a lot retail user to hedge against credit risk in india now uh retail user can use cds to protect against credit risk while non retail user like insurance company pension fund mutual fund big company can also use cds for other purposes right and now uh, this cds contract will be a standardized and traded on exchange with cash settlement to keep things transparent right 
so to keep things transparent all these things have to be done now uh, let's talk about the um, isd agreement so let's quickly go over the isd agreement what it is all about so uh, you can see that uh, um, uh, isd agreement derivative security and how cds contract fit into all this the isd agreement is a standardized document for otc derivative remember it is a standardized document for otc derivative documentation and uh, it was developed in 1985 by the international swap and derivative association remember the full form international swap and derivative association this is the full form of isda it simplify the standardized term for derivative trades now what are the agreements which are included the first is called master agreement which means the mail uh, main legal document then second comes a schedule mm -hmm. so a schedule is a custom terms then next come customization um, or confirmation for a specific trade and last come different booklets and credit support while setting up it uh, while setting up it takes some effort mm -hmm. it makes future transaction much easier because everything is already agreed on now let's talk about something called derivative security obviously initial effort is required but easiest future deals now derivative security or what so derivative security or financial instrument whose value comes from something else like a stock or commodities and they don't have intrinsic value on their own they can be traded on exchange or otc common example include forward future swap and and, and, and forward future options and swap now uh, lastly cs C, cds and isda documentation uh, cds is like insurance against someone who defaulting on their debt so someone is defaulting on their debt and insurance against someone the examination let's jump straight into the key points starting with factoring so first thing first factoring uh, is a way business get cash fast factoring is when companies sell it unpaid uh, Factoring is when companies sell it unpaid invoice to a third party. Also, always call factor. There are two two types. The first is called uh, in uh, the first is called recourse factoring, and other is called non recourse factoring. So uh, we can see factors handle credit control, ledger collection, and bears losses if the buyer default, right? And um, and the one is called recourse, and other is called without recourse. So when I say recourse, it means the business is still owes if the customer don't pay. In non recourse, the factor take the risk of the loss, right? So in non recourse factoring, the factor take the risk of the loss. now factoring help company get about 80% of their money up front almost 80% of the amount uh, um, that is called pay a percentage up front and uh, with rest coming after collection that is on on due date now factoring has been around for thousands of year from ancient room uh, to modern businesses it is it is it has evolved uh, over time to meet financial needs especially in the international trades where two factor one in the exporter country and one in the importer country handle the process you can see it was originated 40000 4000 year ago right already we have discussed what is recourse what is non recourse and we have seen upfront payment right 18% of the invoice wet the credit period is for maximum 150 days eligibility is that supplier must have a profitability positive net worth and i have told you that two type of factor one is called export factor handling financing another is called import factor assess buyer collect payment right so this gives a business a smooth way to manage their cash flow while selling goods globally so now you can see the process importer order he get approval good is shipped export factor dis disburses fund importer pay import factor so this is how it happens right so this is the entire process it includes pre payment sales ledger credit protection and collection all of these are included under the under this process now let's discuss uh, bill discounting and factoring what are the difference between those two so in bill discounting what happen the company get cash by giving it bill of exchange to the bank so this is company and this is bank so this company gives bill of exchange and in, in turns bank give cash right it need a strong balance sheet and collateral and the business is still handle customer collection so it is purely a financing mode you can see it is always with recourse that means exporter is is at risk bank factor is not at risk right when i told when i say it is at recourse it simply means that now what happen in factoring you can see in factoring company sells it invoice to a factor right so in factoring what a company does a company sells as it invoice to the factor have any balance it is not a strong factoring can work if the receivable are good quality so <coughs> in factoring company sells it invoice to a factor and uh, have any balance it is not a strong factoring can work if the receivable are good quality the factor can handle the collection 
right you can see factor handle collection and uh, sometimes even credit insurance is also handled by the factor and uh, and uh, factoring is just more than financing in, we have seen in discounting it was just financing factoring is just more than financing it includes managing your account it includes uh, mm, it comes with some service fee you can easily say here uh, here so so there's a difference between bill discounting and factoring so for bill discounting your balance sheet should be a strong but for um, factoring your balance sheet can be weak also but good quality receivable should be there and bill discounting is always with records while factoring is without without records and the next point we have seen that uh, it, it it is it uh, will discounting only financing mode but in the factoring it include financing account receivable ledger mis collection credit insurance everything now let's talk about the next topic that factoring offers several benefits to the business right like it improves our cash flow especially when payment cycle are long and it helps company gets a get up to 80% of the money up front factoring can also allow business to extend credit to the customer while the factor manages the invoice collections invoice management collection and um, and even provide reports like mis this is speed of cash turnover which which boost production sales profit and return on investment now if we go to for fact for forfeiting so it is a process mainly used in uh, international trade it is used in international trade remember it and the exporter gets a quote from the exim bank which includes fee from a forfeiter once agreed the exporter finalize the deal making it easier to manage export receivable so exporter request quote from exim bank exim bank contact international forfeiter for fees and include quote with include forfeiter fees pass to exporter exporter finalize contract and get importer concurrence now agreement let's talk about the agreement so forfeiting is a method used by exporter to get paid quickly after an agreement is signed with the importer the exporter send shipping document to the forfeiter through the exim bank so you can see exporter submit shipping document to forfeiter via exim bank right the forfeiter then pay the uh, then the, this forfeiter then pay the exporter by discounting the bill okay forfeiter discount bill and uh, keeping a small fee obviously is fee will be charged and exim bank issue a certificate to the exporter right the fees are listed for the custom right when it comes to fee there are two main types the first is called discount fee right so discount fee which is interest based on international rate like libor and second is called commitment fee commitment fee is the charges for locking the discount rate it is usually 0.5 to 1.5 percent per year so these are two type of fee involved in forfeiting now what are the advantages of forfeiting so forfeiting offers several advantages like in this case 100 percent financing in the for in the factoring we have seen only 80 percent financing was initially done but it was 100 percent financing without recourse means entire uh, risk is borne by the expo uh, by the forfeiter right that is the bank meaning the exporter is free from debt repayment it all, so if the buyer does not pay the entire risk is borne by the forfeiter right that is the point now the next thing is it also improve cash flow by converting receivable into immediate cash so this is how it improve cash flow it reduce the administration cost by eliminating receivable management there is no need to receivable management and also allow exporter to offer credit almost freely enhancing competitiveness and now what is the main difference between the uh, factoring and forfeiting let's dive into and price transfer also see um, the main difference is that is their nature right factoring is for short term suitable for uh, for uh, factoring is sorry factoring is for short term ongoing sale whereas forfeiting is for um, t forfeiting is for long term deal medium to long term deal 1 to 5 years if we talk about recourse factoring can be done with recourse or without recourse but forfeiting will always be done without recourse means the liabilities or the or the risk is borne by the forfeiter if we talk about the arrangement factoring involve a continuous relationship with the factor while for Forfeiting does not need for continuous routing of business, right? Now charges, we know in the case of factoring, financing, collection, administration, credit protection, all these charges are included, right? Uh, but in the case of factoring, uh, 
so there are few charges like a discount fee and commitment charge while in case of factoring financing collection administration credit protection mis all these are included and finally uh, the uh, next next point comes is regarding the transaction so uh, the transaction is factoring work for both domestic and international transaction while forfeiting is mostly used for international one of medium to long term now let's talk about tredes that is trade receivable discounting system very very important from examination point of view so it is a system created by the rbi in 2014 uh, to help a small businesses especially msme to get cash quickly by converting their unpaid invoice so the key point is by converting trade receivable or we can say unpaid invoice in simple term we can say unpaid invoice into liquid fund how so it it involves both factoring and reverse factoring it involves both factoring and reverse factoring and does not require msme to repay financer so um uh, msme corporate buyer government department and bank all participate on the platform remember it msme corporate buyer government department psus bank and bsc all can participate the process is quite simple let me show you the process in this next slide so the process is quite simple first step is that uh, msme upload their invoice on trds right a few a factoring unit now uh, corporate buyer approve them corporate buyer f u accept f u on trds platform okay and after that bank bid that means financer that is bank or nbfc bid on f u because they will finance bid on f u bid visible to msme supplier right and msme accept the deal whenever whichever bid is think that it is with favorable to them msme will accept the deal and this trds uh, is money is credited the next day that means trds credit msme account t plus 1 day means next day and it debit debits the financer account okay and making it fast and efficient system so this is how it work right so what are the key features of this trds let's go through the key feature so in trds certain criteria must be met for eligibility what are the condition the first condition is that uh, minimum paid up equity capital is 25 crore and uh, foreign share holding follow current investment policy right and uh, non promoter can't own you can see written here that uh, non promoter entities other than promoter that is called non promoter right non promoter can't hold more than 10% of the trds equity capital and promoter must have a, a strong uh, track record of financial background a strong financial background a track record of at least 5 year and uh, uh, and uh, he must be deemed fit and proper by the regulator the rbi sometimes uh, may collect information may even consult other agencies to ensure everything checks out so to summarize we have discussed that trds and other tools like factoring and forfeiting provide businesses especially msme with the means to convert receivable into cash boosting liquidity and improving financial stability so let's summarize the let's summarize the financial tool so factoring is for short term financing and exporter is responsible for the collection it can be recourse and with without recourse both both applicable in international um, factoring we have several types right so like uh, two factor one factor export factor import factor in two factor it involves both export and import factor in one factor a single factor manages both side in export factor financier financing and uh, and manage financing and manages the export receivable and import factor uh, evaluate import factor evaluate the buyers and collect platform finally we have discussed trds which is designed to finance receivable specifically for msme involving supplier corporate buyer and financer in reverse factoring it is initiated by the buyer to support the supplier so this tool help business managers cash flow and finally we have discussed forfeiting also which in which offer medium term financing without recourse meaning the exporter is not responsible for collection so let's begin with so first of all let's talk about the early days of the venture capital right so um, uh, back in the 1970 india started setting up venture capital to help businesses with big uh, to help businesses with big growth potential you can see written here now the first uh, fund was the risk capital foundation risk capital foundation in short it is called rcf and it was launched by ifci in 1975 then in 1976 uh, idbi launched the seed capital scheme right and uh, aiming to support new business it was aimed to support new business then after in 1983 government made a technology policy statement this was all about making india more self reliant in technology by encouraging the commercialization of tech tech in 1986 icici venture capital limited uh, icici came up with the venture capital scheme to back private tech tech expert in high tech field around the same time 
PACT program was started with 10 million US dollar grant from USA to boost tech commercialization. IDBI also launched its own venture capital um, fund in 1986 funded by the central government and TDICI in 1988 took over ICICI venture capital operation pushing India venture capital scene even further. Now let's look over to the uh, how venture capital evolved in India to India to India perspective. So um, in 1988 as we already discussed RCF that is risk capital foundation transformed into risk capital and technology financial corporation limited also known as RCTFC. This change helped focus more on technology financing and tech, tech financing and VC fund venture capital fund fast forward to 2021 and we see a huge leap. The Indian startup ecosystem attracted a whooping 17.2 billion US dollar from January to July alone, July to alone, alone, surpassing the investment made in 2020 and 2019. Now, let's quickly look at some of the key features of venture capital finance. The first thing is equity based. You can see equity based. So venture capital is often provided as equity, especially when companies are not ready to float their share in the market. The next thing is support without uh, mm, uh, without control, right? So what does it mean support without control? So it means that uh, uh, venture capitalists often offer guidance and support but don't get involved in day to day running of the business. And the third is uh, exit strategy, right? So where VC usually exit when the company become profitable, earning their return through capital gain rather than interest. So they, this is the exit strategy. Now let's understand uh, we are breaking down how venture capital financing work in the next slide how venture capital financing work. So first let's talk about how venture capitalists or VC make their money. The first is called conditional loan. So VC often earn through royalties based on companies uh, sale or profitability. Next is high risk high return. VC usually invest in high risk high reward sector like technology and biotech startup focusing on long term goal. Now, management involvement. Sometimes VC even participate in company management to help steer it towards success. Now, venture, venture capital financing generally happen in two main stages. The first stage is called early stage seed capital. Seed capital is the money used for research and development to test the innovative idea. Only a few fund invest here, usually through a low interest rate loan. Next is the startup stage. This is when VC fund the commercial production of project, especially those with market potential like technology transfer or import substitution. So this is a quick overview of how venture capital financing work and its stages. So early stage and startup stage. These are two stages where venture capital financing is done. Now let's con continue our discussion. Let's pick up from where we left off in the previous slide. Now the second round financing happen. Uh, this stage is for companies that have started production but need additional fund to keep going. It is riskier than a startup stage since the business is still is still proving itself. Right as you can see in the startup stage finance for commercial production of pro project with market potential. Okay, so it's so second round financing is little bit riskier. Now, now let's move on to the large stage, large stage financing. So uh, expansion financing. So this is when a company needs money to grow, whether it is expanding operation, launching new product or entering new market. The next is called bridge financing. Remember this term very, very important. This is short term funding that help a company stay afloat until a major event happen like an IPO, right? initial public offering or a merger. So these are the these are like short term funding that help a company stay afloat until a major event happen. Now, now something called mezzanine financing very very super important. This stage is for company that are ready to go public, right? It provide a necessary support to ensure a smooth public offering. So now let's recap to recap the early stage financing. We have seen seed seed capital, which is for R&D. Remember the recap is very important. So seed capital R&D, which is fund for R&D to test innovative idea, a startup finance stage finance to launch and produce commercial viable project. Second round, it is basically additional fund for company already in production, but needing more capital to grow for expansion. So remember these thing. These are early stage recap, second round financing. And then after later stage may um, in later stage, expansion financing, bridge financing and mezzanine financing. 
now uh, so we have discussed all these thing mm-hmm. now let's discuss um, uh, continue our journey into the world of venture capital by exploring second round and after stage financing second round financing is less risky and usually happen after a company has launched a product at this stage business is starting to gain traction so the risk for venture capitalists is lower now let's talk about the large later stage financing so this include expansion financing this is for company looking to increase its production capacity and uh, hence venture capitalists might retain more equity as the company grow the last is called replacement financing in this stage the venture capitalists buy share from shareholder who want to exit providing liquidity to those looking to cash out the state is something called turn around financing this is for reviving company that are currently losing money in such case vc may appoint a point their own director to help steer the company back to profitability there is something called buyout deals and management buyout this is when active shareholder buy share from passive one usually funding from venture capitalist it is way for management to take control of the company now let's discuss the next topic how venture capitalist financing work and its regulation so process so let's start with the process of venture capital financing there is something called deal origination so vc find potential deal through referral from partner organization or network the next is called screening project are evaluated based on factors like market potential technology investment size location and financing stage next is called evaluation vc focus on entrepreneur profile look at their skill track record future prospect deal negotiation so after investing vc often um, participate on the company board to ensure business follow the planned strategy sorry deal negotiation means what here the terms are set including investment amount profit sharing and right of both party now come post investment after investing vc often part- participate on the company board to ensure business follow the planned strategy and there is something called exit plan vc exit the investment through option like ipo acquisition or buyout by the original promoter with the goal of maximizing profit and minimizing losses now regulatory aspect very very important see so how venture capitalists are raised and finance uh, mode especially uh, so we, this is what we are going to talk about in this particular slide which is basically relating to the uh, regulatory aspect right so initially these fund were regulated by the comptroller of capital issue 1998 from 1995 cb security exchange board of india became responsible for registering and regulating venture capital fund now cb 1996 regulation which was later amended in 2000 defined venture capital fund as trust or company that have a dedicated pool of capital these fund can only invest in venture capital undertaking which are domestic unlisted company and they they must avoid sector sectors on cb negative list now one main thing is that venture capital fund must be registered with cb right this is very important must be registered with cb and uh, must must meet a specific condition like ensure their director and employee are fit and proper and they can't raise money from the public so that's the key point now let's discuss how venture capital fund are raised and financing modes let's explain the, all of this in the next slide see uh, venture capital fund typically venture capital funds typically raise money from investor who contribute a minimum of 5 lakh each before the starting operation this fund uh, must secure firm commitment totaling at least 5 crore they this ensure that they have enough capital um, to start investing in promising business uh, now on to the modes of venture capital financing you can see the modes of venture capital financing venture capital fin- finance company through equity and debt instrument and uh, let's focus on equity equity involve uh, ownership owners ownership uh, instrument like ordinary and preference share ordinary share give the investor ownership in the company but don't guarantee dividend let's break down preference share further this preference share um, comes with an assured dividend at a specific rate here are the main type you can see cumulative non cumulative and participative cumulative share accumulate until uh, unpaid dividend meaning if the dividend is not paid in one year it carries over to the next year non cumulative means uh, they, they don't accumulate unpaid dividend so if a dividend is not paid in one year so it is lost and there is participating de- um, preference share so this share allows shareholder to receive additional dividend if the company profit exceeds a certain level right so this is how venture capital fund are raised and the equity instrument they are using for 
now let's talk about the debt instrument so uh, debt instrument are essential tool for borrowing money and here are the key one you should know the first is called debenture debenture are long term loan with fixed interest rate uh, they can uh, they can be secured that is backed by the asset or they can be unsecured meaning there is no collateral then there is something called bonds you know so these bonds are similar to debenture but typically have longer maturity period plus they are offered often traded on market the next is called conditional loan so these loan are repayable as royalties after the company start generating revenue right uh, which means repayment depends on how will the business perform now convertible loan so these loan give the lender the option to convert the debt into equity at a later stage which can be beneficial if the company value increases now there is a conventional loan they are uh, so they are standard terms loan with fixed interest rate they are repayable in regular installment now let's discuss uh, the advantage of the venture capital financing in the final uh, slide so first thing is wealth and expertise so it means vc brings not just money but also valuable expertise and network they can help grow the business the next thing is large equity uh, large equity finance so venture capital provide a significant amount of equity financing which can be crucial for a scaling up operation the next thing is safety for entrepreneur so unlike loan entrepreneur are not obligated to repay the invested amount if the business does not succeed however there are some disadvantage the first thing is loss of autonomy so founder may lose some control over their company as vc often want to stay say in the major decision complex process see securing venture capital is a lengthy and complex process which a high level of risk involved uncertain profitability so vc make long term investment but the profitability is uncertain and takes year to materialize so now let's to talk about the exit route for venture capital so vc typically aim to disinvest early to real, to realize gain from the appreciation of their share and to fund new venture so there are main so here are the main exit exit alternative the first thing is ipo so the company goes public allowing vc to sell their share on the stock market the next is buyback so the original promoter buy back the share from the vc giving them an exit so that's an wrap now let's uh, let's summarize uh, venture capital financing that uh, i think this is the last uh, stage yes merger and acquisition are there management buyout are there and secondary market offering are also there so what is venture venture capital financing so it is a long term uh, long term investment in business that have high growth potential venture capital come in various form equity conditional loan like royalties and conventional loan vc take both the financial risk and reward betting on company future success venture capital financing is usually divided into two stages i'm just recalling all the fact which we have covered earlier the first is called early stage like seed funding and the second is called later stage like expansion or mezzanine funding the process is simple venture capital uh, financing process typically in all six step the first step include deal orientation screening evaluation negotiation post investment involvement and exit plan exit route includes what exit route includes uh, initial public offering ipo the company goes public buyback the original promoter buyback the share and sell to another company or new vc the vc sell their stake now first thing first whenever company uh, need to buy equipment or asset for their business they have four main op four main option they can use equity right their own money they can borrow debt they can borrow the money that is called debt or they can lease or hire the equipment so today we are focusing on leasing what is leasing see leasing is like renting something you don't own the asset but you get to use it by paying a lease fee right the person or the company who own it is called lesser and uh, uh, who and he remains the owner while you the lessee just use it leasing in india begin in 1973 uh with the first company called first co of india limited the leasing business really grew in 1980 especially when the big bank like icici joins in this sparked a lot of new leasing company in the market now big names like first leasing co and 20th century finance became popular and their success brought even more player into the leasing game now let's see the leasing evolution international group like ifc open uh, joint venture to promote leasing in india as as the government introduced stricter rule on investment company start seeing leasing as a better option leasing growth leasing growth in india followed the capital market trend companies that focus only on leasing did better than company that are little bit of everything in the 1990s a big bank like sbi and and boi right just just move to here uh, yeah you can see in 1999 1994 big bank like sbi and boi jumped into leasing after the economy opened up in 1991 foreign company like ge capital also started investing 
if we talk about the type of leasing the first is called finance leasing so it is like committing to use the asset for most of its life the person using the asset that is called lessee takes care of maintenance and uh, pays for both the cost as well as some interest when the lease is over the asset might be returned asset might be returned after the lease is period that is when lease is over asset might be returned this is about the finance lease if we talk about the operating lease so it is short term you don't use the asset for its whole life like in the finance lease you use the asset for most of the life right and in the operating lease you don't use the asset for its whole life the owner that is lesser handles the maintenance and the asset can be leased out to the different people now this is common for thing like computers and windmill so that is the evolution of the leasing in india in nutshell now uh, let's uh, uh, so this is a topic okay one committee i am telling you the committee name is uh, gs that gs dahotri committee it recommend that rbi to issue leading leasing guidelines and leasing growth supported by bank and institutional funding already we have discussed now a financial lease versus operating lease what is the difference very very important so uh, finance lease uh, first of all duration so the finance lease is for the full life of the asset as we already know and operating lease is for shorter period revocation finance lease you can't cancel a finance lease but you can cancel an operating lease maintenance so the in 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 in, in a finance lease person using the asset that is a lessee handle the maintenance while in operating lease the person giving the asset that is less owner owner jo hai owner hai take care of it now obsolescence so in the finance lease the lessee takes on the risk of the asset become outdated in operating lease the lesser carry the risk purchase option at the end of finance lease you can buy the asset in the operating lease you don't have this option type of lease arrangement so one is called close in lease after the lease period in the asset goes back to the owner open ended the lessee has the option to purchase the asset upfront lease means the lessee pay lower rent at first but the cost goes up later percentage lease so it means what along with a fixed rent the lessee also pay a fixed percentage of their revenue from the previous year then there is something called cross border lease so the lesser and the lessee are from different country if we talk about types of lease financing so first is called uh, um, direct lease so direct lease means what the lesser buy the asset and then leases it to the lessee then leverage lease leverage lease means that the lesser borrow money to buy the asset and the rent paid by lessee is used to repay the loan and there is something called sales and lease back the lessee sells their own asset to the lesser and then leases it back this is a great way for business to raise fund while still using their asset now let's talk about the advantage already we have discussed leverage and sell back advantage of lease finance see Uh, the lesser so why is lease finance so popular right so the the lesser enjoy regular income from the lease payment the next thing is lessee lease financing is highly profitable for the lesser next thing is it help business by giving them access to asset they need with support growth plus there are tax benefit for the lessee right now let's talk about the impact of leasing on the financial ratios in the next slide see um, in this in this video we'll quickly go over how leasing impact financial issue in the legal aspect when a company leases an asset it does not show up there uh, upon their balance sheet or uh, as an asset and liability it's like it is invisible instead the lease payment are recorded as an expense so the company debt to equity ratio remain the same because um, because uh, why it remain the same because the leasing don't cause uh, don't cause uh, count as a borrowing right leasing don't count as a borrowing next to- topic is lease uh, legal aspect of leasing so according to the transfer of property act a lease uh, means you are using an asset in return for rent but you don't own in the next thing is indian accounting standard 19 also define leasing as a simply having the right to use uh, the asset for payment without owning it or exchange for payment a lease is not a sale uh, you just have the right to use the goods here is an important part gst that is government and Sur- goods and services tax applies to the lease payment because it is treated as sales under tax law now indian contract act govern the lease agreement and making sure both parties stick to the terms for equipment lease uh, the it is considered a bailment contract where lesser is the le- is the bailer and the lessee is the bailee now both the lesser and lessee uh, have a certain duties the lesser has to deliver um, the asset give give permission to use it and ensure that lessee has a peaceful possession of the asset the lessee must pay rent maintain the asset and return it once the lease end so these are the duties of the lesser and lessee 
now if we talk about regulatory aspect of lending there are some important regulatory rules so bank need approval from the rbi uh, to conduct le leasing through their subsidiary the leasing subsidiary of a bank can only focus on leasing no direct lending bank have to report their leasing activity to rbi bank need to follow prudential guidelines that they should only lease at selected branch treat it as loan and stick to limits on how much they can lease equipment leasing by bank must not exceed 10% of their total loan bank also need not need to avoid asset liability management and bank must ensure that they account for full depreciation within the le uh, lease period if you talk about the higher purchase let's talk about this point higher purchase see there also something called higher purchase which is another way to acquire asset with higher purchase you pay for the asset in installment which is uh, instead of buying it upfront and uh, once the installment are paid the person making the payment can choose to purchase the asset ownership only transfer after the final payment is made now let's discuss more about this higher higher purchase acquire asset by installment so so what is it all about so higher purchase allow you to acquire goods by paying installment instead of one big payment but there is a catch if you can't keep up with the payment the seller has a right to reclaim it right if you no longer if you no longer want the asset you can return it and stop making payment the installment you pay are treated as higher charge so whatever installment you pay they are treated as higher charge right and uh, uh, and not ownership payment typically you you start with down payment of 20 to 25% of the total price and the rest is paid in emi the contract can also be terminated by giving a notice if the other party want to end it now if you talk about the evolution of higher purchase in india so if it it, it actually come from british system and has been in india for nearly 100 years The first company offering higher purchase in India was Commercial Credit Corporation and Motor and General Finance. Now, the higher purchase developed in two areas. First is consumer durable and second is automobile. Consumer durable like home appliance, automobile like car and commercial vehicle. For consumer durable, dealers of big brand like Singer for sewing machine and Murphy for radios promoted higher purchase. Right. and uh, the next point is for commercial vehicle higher purchase become very popular held by finance company and vehicle dealer early reposition uh, and the value of the asset drove the fast growth of the higher purchase in india now if we talk about the legal aspect of higher purchase so legally a legal higher purchase is considered a bailment contract not a sale this means you are just renting the asset one until you pay it off so the first topic is regarding the credit rating and crs right so uh, credit rating is like a report card for the company or financial instrument right so uh, it tells us how risky it is to lend money to them a rating is given in letter or number based on their financial health and it help us understand if they can pay back the loan now what why credit rating why credit rating matters why it matters so first of all we have understood what it is now why why it matter So, so we are talking about the purpose. See, these ratings are important because they assess how safe it is to invest in things like bond or commercial paper, right? It is all about solvency, and uh, which is just a fancy way of saying can they repay, right? क्या वो repay कर सकते हैं? Now, if we talk about the history of this credit rating, so credit rating was started way back in 1909 when John Moody rated U.S. railroad bonds. and uh, um, fast forward to today we have big names like moody's s&p fitch who rate countries and company worldwide india has got into the game of save of the in india has got into the game from 1998 uh, with crisel right so india has seven indian agencies remember this name question are asked okay so now there are seven major agencies here some are uh, some are tied with global cra like crisil we tied with snp icra with moody's care with fitch now let's talk about characteristics and benefit of credit rating so first of all what is the benefit to the investor you can see it written here so for investor these ratings are super helpful they show the risk of investing and keep track of the company right they keep track of the company's ability to repay the loan also they are easy to understand with clear symbol and are available at low cost as you can see it has a repayment capability it is based on expert financial analysis it is expressed in simple symbol it provides unbiased reliable info so these are the characteristics now if uh, that's a quick rundown of credit rating 
now what is the benefits to the company right what what is the benefit of this particular credit rating to the company as you can see it easily here uh, written here right uh, to the company how it is beneficial so for company getting a good credit rating can help them borrow money more easily and at lower interest rate it also boosts their credibility help them grow and keep their financial discipline in check right so this is how it helpful to the company now the, the next pertinent question is how are companies rated right what factors are considered while rating company or their financial instrument several key factors are considered things like how well they can repay their debt their cash flow history you can see written here that uh, uh, what kind of things are considered let me just show you like uh, that uh, uh, how well their debt service ability how their their cash flow right their cash flow history what is the future prediction and whether their earning can cover the interest or loan a rating agency is also check if the company has enough asset for collateral so asset value as collateral if it has enough asset for collateral right and how will they manage their short term liquidity read so it is called short term liquidity position so all these things are taken care of now let's discuss the other factors that influence the rating so you can say there are some additional factors in credit rating beyond just financial agencies look at things like company market share and uh, the stability of its customer base how much stable is its customer base and its research and development effort r and d and effort right they also assess the quality of management and uh, industry industry like competition industry risk like competition and even government regulation in short it is 360 degree uh, degree view of the company's health and poten potential now th so this explain the benefit to the issuer and dives into various factor considered while assigning rating now let's discuss rating symbol so understanding credit rating symbol let's go let's come to the next slide so in india there are seven cbi approved cra credit credit rating agency and they use a specific symbol to show the level of investment risk ratings are grouped into category like high investment investment and speculative friends if you need such type of ultra micro notes for each and every unit you can enroll in our inifs pdf course as well as inifs capsule program in both of this program i am providing you such type of content which will help you in fast revision for more detail you can whatsapp me on this particular number now if you talk about the grades so rating are groups into category like high investment and speculative so here in a example given here like triple a so triple a is the highest rating you know this triple a is the highest rating and it indicates the least risk obviously rating is high so least risk is low while d if we talk about the d this d represent the lowest risk involved or we can say default risk this d represent the default risk right so remember this thing uh, triple a highest rating d default default risk now uh, if we talk about the uh, to remember these rating are for financial instrument like bonds okay and one more thing i am telling you to make thing more precise uh, some ratings have plus or minus sign as you can see to add the precision this plus or minus sign have been provided remember these rating are for financial instrument like bonds not the company themselves they are not mean to tell you if you should invest they just show the risk involved right so remember this this uh, this rating are for the bonds that they issued right so symbols like triple a double a triple a has the highest rating and obviously when the rating is higher the risk involved is quite lower and d is the called default risk remember this and plus and minus sign is also added now let's look at the credit quality and rating outlook So hopefully you have understood the purpose because these rating are not for company. These are for these are for um, the rated instrument like bonds. For example, I am telling you bonds. Now if we talk about the credit quality and rating outlook, credit quality is all about how likely a company is to repay its debt and how bad the losses will be if they can't. Right. So th two things are there: how likely it will repay the debt and how likely uh, how bad the loss would be if they can't. Right. so uh, uh, the the symbol used in rating compare the risk between different companies or the risk between different bonds now each rating also come with an outlook that predict if the rating might change in the future 
right so outlook is that predict rating direction so one thing is that a stable outlook so suppose outlook is stable it means that uh, no big changes are expected and if the outlook is positive it suggests that uh, uh, rating could go up and if the outlook is negative it suggests that the rating could go down it might drop down and no outlook means there is no prediction right now let's talk about cra regulation in india what is this cra regulation so see credit rating agencies in, so in short called cra are uh, regulated by sebi under the cra regulation act 1999 so credit rating agencies in india are regulated by sebi already we know mm-hmm. under the cra regulation of 1999 to operate an, an, an agency needs to have a, an agency needs to have at least 5 crore net worth you can see written here mm-hmm. and 5 uh, uh, crore ne- net worth in, in solid infrastructure and experienced professional and further they must work with integrity competency independent and keep their rating confidential under officially published plus they need to keep their record for at least 5 years remember these these are the two important points now if we talk about the conflict of interest very good important point so credit rating agency have a strict rule to avoid conflict of interest they are not allowed to raid security from their own promoters or associate they are also held accountable through internal audit and oversight by sebi after the 2008 financial crisis yes you know post uh, 2008 to 2000 in 2008 there comes a financial crisis so new reforms were introduced to improve transparency and make cra more reliable so in 2010 you can see in 2010 agency had to enhance transparency and conduct a regular audit in by 2016 the they standardized their press release and publicly shared their rating criteria and now if the company don't cooperate rating criteria don't cooperate during rating cra are required to disclose that too now let's talk about the fees for credit rating and credit scoring what are the fees the first thing is that credit rating agencies are mostly paid by the company that they, that they rate not by the investor in fact 95% of a cra revenue comes from the issuer so credit rating agency are mostly paid by the company they rate not by the investor in fact 95% of a cra revenue comes from the issuer these company also pay annual fee to monitor their rating over the time so this is what about fee right so remember 95% of the cra revenue comes from the issuer these company also pay annual fee to monitor their rating over the time on the other hand credit scoring is used to measure the credit worthiness of individual so the credit rating obviously you know credit rating is paid by an issuer not investor remember it okay so credit uh, creating agency are mostly paid by the company they rate not by the investor and if you talk about the credit scoring it gauges the credit worthiness of the of an individual and uh, it is mostly for loan and pricing based on um, it is mostly for loan and pricing based on the risk while credit rating are for big entities like company or government credit score apply to individual so in india cic is credit information company monitors credit credit score so just like uh, global leaders like area um, experian equifax and transunion do worldwide now let's talk about the uh, credit information company in india what is cic so in india cic collect and maintain record of all loans and credit card payment as you can see we are discussing about cic credit information company so they collect and maintain record of all loan and credit card payment the data submitted by bank and credit institution help create credit report that assess an individual credit worthiness accuracy is super important you can see importance of accuracy super important because any error in the record could affect someone credit score and legislation cr cic are required by the rbi under the credit information company regulation act 2005 and this cic follow a strict rule and need a license from the rbi to operate to operate now let's talk about uh, credit information companies in india so cic is there are four major companies <coughs> so first is called civil civil is the civil was the first cic in india and it provide credit report for both the individual as well as corporation and for individual credit score range from 300 to 900 and a credit score above 700 is generally preferred by the lender the next is called experian so experian established in 2006 through a joint venture with bank experian create report based on person finance history next comes is uh, equifax equifax started in us bank in 189 1899 it became operating in india in 2010 
so what so what about experience we have told you experience was established in 2006 through a joint venture with the bank the experience created reports based on personal finance history and then after we have seen equifax equifax uh, started in us back in 1899 it began operating in india in 2010 and uh, bringing global expertise to the market and then we have crif high mark so this is rbi approved this company approved by the rbi focuses on serving the retail agriculture msme and micro finance sector now let's talk about membership to cic so and um, how organization become member of the cic bank insurance company telecom provider and credit rating agencies can all become member or all uh, can all become member in fact all credit institutions are required to just one to join just one cic now if we talk about difference between ceiling rate and credit score so what about ceiling rate uh, credit rating and credit score let's talk about the difference between credit rating and credit score so hopefully you have understood the membership it is open to all kind of uh, credit institution insurance company banks telecom service sector reconstruction company now uh, the next topic is regarding the difference between credit rating and credit score here is an important distinction credit rating are for corporation or government measuring their ability to do to repay their debt on the other hand credit score apply to individual and are used by lender to assess personal um, loans eligibility and risk so that's the difference when i say credit rating and credit report so it means it, it clearly means that Uh, already i have told you that uh, credit rating is for government or corporation whereas credit score is for individual that's the key point you have to keep in mind now list time next question comes how does ci cic collect data right so a pertinent question that uh, information source right so see cic gather information only from their member like bank and other financial institution however to solve the problem of incomplete data aditya puri committee remember this committee it recommended that all the credit institution become member of the cic in this this way no credit information is left on if we talk about the membership fee so becoming a member of cic is fairly affordable the membership fee is usually capped at 10000 with an annual renewal period of fee of rupees 5000 or less now if we talk about the discrepancy difference between credit rating and credit score so credit rating are provided by cra while credit score are provided by cic that's the difference crc says credit rating by cra credit score by cic already i have told you there are seven cra in india and there are four cic in india right so remember this and now now the next thing is a format credit rating use alpha numeric format with plus minus sign already told you while credit score use three digit or which is 300 live in 300 to 900 if we talk about the target audience so target audience credit rating focus on corporation or government while credit score are mainly for individual and small businesses begin with so we will break down what mutual fund are and how they work in a way that is easy to understand mutual fund you can think imagine mutual fund like a big pot right so uh, where where people money put their money together where people put their money together this money is then used to invest in stocks right and uh, stocks uh, and uh, bonds and other thing to help everyone makes a profit right so uh, the, these funds are managed by some professionals right and uh, in india they are closely watched by sebi sebi means security and exchange board of india which is a government body that protect investor it comes in different types if you talk about the types so you can see it comes in uh, uh, equity fund right and uh, you can see they, these are the trust these are the stakeholder sponsor trustee amc and custodian so what each person do we will discuss in the next slide and uh, you know this uh, um, this mutual fund comes in different type like equity fund it may comes in debt fund it may comes in hybrid fund so equity debt hybrid these are three way three important parts now uh um, the profit you make from mutual fund depend on how much you have invested now these funds are set up as trust so these funds are set up as trust in the form of trust these funds are set up and uh, there are different key players like amc so the amc or asset management company handles the investment then comes custodian so this custodian keeps the security safe that's safeguard security and then comes trustee you can see written trustee so this trustee makes your everything run run smoothly for the investor right so this is how uh, this is all about the three stakeholder again i am repeating amc uh, handles the investment custodian keep the uh, keeps uh, the security safe and trustee makes your everything run smoothly for the investor now if you talk about the evolution of mutual fund so mutual fund started in india uh, back in 1963 and uh, but since then they have gone through four major changes 
टुडे सेवी मेक्स योर म्यूचुअल फंड आर वेल वेल रेगुलेटेड एंड विथ रूल इन प्लेस टू प्रोटेक्ट अस एज इन्वेस्टर राइट सो फाइनली इफ यू वॉन्ट टू नो हाउ वेल योर म्यूचुअल फंड इज डूइंग यू कैन चेट चेक इट्स एन ए वी एन ए वी मीन्स नेट एसेट वैल्यू दिस टेल्स यू द करेंट मार्केट वैल्यू ऑफ द इन्वेस्टमेंट माइनस एक्सपेंस दैट इज कॉल्ड मार्केट वैल्यू ऑफ एक्सपेंसिस माइनस एक्सपेंस डिवाइडेड बाई टोटल नंबर ऑफ यूनिट्स इन द फंड राइट सो यू कैन सी से वी इज टू थर्ड ऑफ द ट्रस्टी बोर्ड एंड फिफ्टी परसेंट ए एम डायरेक्टर मस्ट बी इंड सो एज पर से वी ट्रस्टी बोर्ड टू थर्ड परसेंट एंड एम सी डायरेक्टर फिफ्टी परसेंट मस्ट बी इंडिपेंडेंट एंड एम सी मैनेजर्स फंड कस्टडी एंड होल्ड सिक्योरिटी ट्रस्टी होल्ड प्रॉपर्टी फॉर यूनिट होल्डर बेनिफिट एंड परफॉर्मेंस इज मेजर्ड बाई एन ए वी नेट एसेट वैल्यू से वी नाइनटीन रिप्लेस बाय 1996 कॉम्प्रिहेंसिव रेगुलेशन ओके सो नाउ 1963 द फर्स्ट यूटीआई वाज फॉर्म्ड म्यूचुअल फंड इंडस्ट्री बिगिन्स इन इंडिया फोर फेजेज यू कैन सी आई ऑलरेडी आई टोल यू फर्स्ट फेज यूटीआई फेज टू पीएसयू बैंक एल आई सी जी आई सी फेज थ्री प्राइवेट सेक्टर बैंक से वी एम एफ रेगुलेशन एंड फेज फॉर यू टी आई बाइफोरकेशन एंड से वी क्लासीफाइड द म्यूचुअल फंड इन टू फाइव कैटेगरी इक्विटी डेप्ट हाइब्रिड सोल्यूशन ऑरियंटेड अदर स्कीम नाउ लेट्स टॉक अबाउट इक्विटी स्कीम फर्स्ट so uh, equity scheme or fund that are mostly invested in stocks right here is a quick breakdown of uh, uh, some of the uh, some of the most common types one is called multi cap fund right other is called large cap fund and other is called large and multi cap fund so we, 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 so you can see uh, we will uh, we will further break break it down so multi cap fund puts money into large medium and small company large cap fund right so these are the various type of fund now if you talk about uh, you can see contra fund so uh, in the in the case of uh, equity scheme small cap fund means 65% is invested in the smaller and faster growing company dividend yield fund means look for a stock that pay regular dividend like 65% is the dividend yield stock value fund means focuses on finding a stock that are undervalued 65% in equity follow now uh, value uh, value investment strategy and you can see d6 type already i have told you multi cap fund what does it mean multi cap fund means puts money into large medium and small cap large cap fund means focuses mainly on big well established company large and mid cap fund means mixes investment in big and small size company medium size company and mid cap funds means focuses on medium size business right already i have told you these are the equity scheme small cap fund dividend yield fund value fund then after comes in the next slide let's discuss uh, contra fund what does contra fund means so contra fund means invest in stocks that are not popular right now but have the potential now focused fund invest in limited number of stock not more than 30 sectoral or thematic fund focuses on only one industry or one theme elss equity link saving scheme it offer tax benefits but comes with three year lock in period Now let's move to the debt scheme. Debt scheme are safer because they mainly invest in bond and fixed income securities. How there is how they work. First comes overnight fund. Overnight funds means match money is invested for just one day. Liquid fund. Liquid fund means investment lasts up to ninety one days. Ultra short duration fund. Investment range from three to six month. Low duration fund. Investment invest for six to twelve month. then money market fund matures within a year short duration fund uh, investment between 1 to 3 year then comes uh, um, debt scheme so debt scheme further continued medium duration fund so medium duration fund typically invest for 3 to 4 year medium to long duration fund typically invest from 4 to 7 year long duration fund macro duration greater than 6 7 year and if we talk about the dynamic fund so dynamic fund moves across different investment duration um, based on market condition and corporate bond fund puts 80% of its money in top rated corporate bond so yet so whether you prefer the high rate high risk and potential reward of equity fund or the safety of debt fund there is a mutual fund for everyone now let's discuss the next type of fund of uh, debt fund the credit risk fund invest mostly in the corporate bond and uh, but are not the but uh, but the, so so they invest mostly in corporate bond that are not the highest rated but offer higher return then coming banking and psu fund so focuses on bonds from market uh, banks public sector companies and government bodies so it focuses on uh, uh, bonds from bank psus and government body guild fund so primarily invest in government securities 
right making it a safer option guilt fund 10 year duration so focuses specifically on 10 year government security then comes floater fund floater fund invest mostly in bond with floating interest rate which can adjust over time if we talk about other type of fund then comes equity saving of equity saving a mix of stock so at least 65 percent stock you can see and then debt is minimum 10 percent bond at least 10 percent with detail on hedging in offer document right so hedging or honey it is mentioned in the offer document then comes so this is equity saving scheme equity saving it is open-ended scheme then comes uh, index fund or etf so these fund track and index like you know there is a nse bsc these are indexes so investing 95 percent or more in security from that index um, and uh, it provide diversification with lower uh, um, risk then comes fund of fund that is called fof so fof are, these are fund invest in other mutual fund so giving you a diversified portfolio without having to pick individual fund then comes retirement fund retirement fund are long-term investment with five-year lock-in until retirement or until requirement retirement then comes children fund these are long-term investment for your child future with five-year lock-in or until they reach adulthood so these are the different types of fund then comes types of fund structure the one is called open-ended fund you can buy and sell anytime with no fixed maturity right at the fund daily price that is called open ended fund close ended fund no maturity date of open ended fund until bought sold at daily nav then comes closed mutual fund closed ended fund so these have a fixed maturity date and are available for purchase during a specific period then comes interval fund interval fund means you can buy and sell during a specific time only with minimum gap of 15 days between transaction if we talk about the investment styles then comes active fund managed by professionals who actively uh, choose where to invest but this comes with higher fee then comes passive fund passive fund the just follow an index so they have lower fee and they try to match the match the market return then comes growth scheme so reinvest earn earning to grow your investment over time ideal for long term goal dividend scheme so this this pay you pay regular income they pay you regular income uh, for those looking for periodical payout so whether you are uh, looking for safety growth or regular income right <clears throat> uh, there is a mutual fund for you now let's talk about the role of the mutual fund so uh, mutual fund help you diversify your investment and are managed by professional you can start investing with as little as rupees 500 and some fund even offer tax benefit now if you talk about mutual fund supervision so SEBI SEBI ensure that uh, security exchange board of india it ensures that mutual fund follow the rules and safeguard investor interest then comes emfi emfi promote best practices in the mutual fund now now let's discuss SEBI regulation was started in 1993 and it was revised updated in 1996 and continue to evolve now let's talk about the risk so an important risk like market environment risk so this happen when the market is affected by things like inflation natural disaster or political changes diversifying your investment does not always help with this type of risk then come concentration risk if you focus all your investment in just one sector or one fund it can lead to big gain or big loss diversification can help reduce that loss then comes interest rate risk this affect debt fund when market interest rate change bond price can go up and low liquidity risk so some fund especially tax saving one have lock-in period of three to five year meaning you can't touch your money during that time then comes credit risk so credit risk means even though credit rating is a guide but there is still chance that the issuer or the uh, issuer of the bond could default on the payment then there is something called riskometer so we introduced the riskometer in 2015 to indicate mutual level mutual fund level risk level of a mutual fund there are six six risk level initially it was five now it is six so it is uh, let me tell you what are the risk level in the next slide the first is low uh, moderately low uh, moderate moderately high high very high so low risk means safer investment and uh, but lower return medium risk means some risk but better return high risk means higher higher risk with potential for higher reward lastly let's talk about how returns are calculated so absolute return so it means simple percentage change not considering the time then there is something called analyzed return method so this is used for return over a year and considered CAGR you can see the CAGR formula current value upon beginning value to the power 1 upon year minus 1 
now so with mutual fund you get professional management tax benefit and also with the chance to grow your money but always be aware of the risk right now let's discuss the net asset value so net asset value already i have told you that it shows the value of a mutual fund asset and it is updated by 9 pm for certain mutual fund like fund of fund already i have told you the fund of fund which invest in different types of mutual fund so this fund of fund um, this can be extended until 10 am next day so the nav is published in two newspaper and on website web, and, on, and on website like amfi right it is it is um, it is a published in two, two newspaper and on website like amfi and and uh, it's it is rounded to four decimal place for debt and liquid fund and two decimal place for index and uh, for equity and balance fund right now if we talk about the expense ratio this is the percentage of the fund asset that goes toward operating expense each year right for example if the expense ratio is 1% it means that 1% of the total asset is used for managing that fund so 1% of the asset is used for managing that fund right you can find this info in the offer document now if you talk about load versus no load fund so it means load fund charges a fee when you enter or exit for the fund and no load fund means no entry or exit charge making them a cheaper option for investor let's talk about investment strategies in the mutual fund so first thing is sip sip means systematic investment plan you invest a small amount regularly even as little as rupees 500 and this method takes advantage of compounding and uh, and rupee cost averaging helping you save in a disciplined way you can save up to set up to as as you set as up to sip invest fortnightly if monthly quarterly next then next come stp stp means systematic transfer plan so this method allow you to transfer money from one mutual fund to another at regular interval it is great for gradually moving money from safer fund like liquid fund into higher risk equity fund right so that is called systematic transfer plan and there is something called swp that is systematic withdrawal plan this is the opposite of sip you withdraw a small amount regularly making it a perfect strategy for retiree who need a steady income you can set up withdrawal weekly monthly or quarterly so this short script capture the key points and make them easy to understand now let's discuss <coughs> sorry friends Uh, role of mutual fund again so uh, mutual fund are important financial intermediary in india but they work differently from bank they they rely on intermediaries distributors to connect with investor sebi that is security exchange board of india india's market regulator uh, uh, require all distributor to have nism certificate and amfi registration number uh, that is called arn 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 means AMFI registration number for distributor. Even bank employee who sell mutual fund need this certification along with unique EUIN. What is this EUIN? This is called employee. This is called employee unique identification number. Now, if we talk about the bank involvement, bank play a huge role in promoting mutual fund through their branches, and uh, they earn commission from mutual fund product. This create a sort of financial supermarket uh, where bank offer both their own product and mutual fund to the customer. Then comes. Uh, um, uh, how mutual fund work see mutual fund gathers money from investor and invest in various productive asset they are ideal for people who might not have the expertise or time to invest directly in the stock market mutual fund are set up as trust with a sponsor trustee asset management company already i have told you that they set up they set up a trust with a sponsor trustee amc and custodian and uh, to safeguard the investment sebi regulate this fund and measure their risk using the tool called riskometer if we talk about aif that is alternative investment fund so aif has privately pooled investment vehicle that don't follow the same sebi rules as mutual fund however things like family trust employee benefit trust are not considered aif fund now uh, way this could improve, improve so family trust esop trust employee welfare trust and not aif fund remember it so friend this was all about this particular unit if you want pdf of this particular unit you can enroll in our inifs capsule course the detail regarding capsule course is available by whatsapp me on this number and on the description section also you have the entire content in just 10 minutes so let's begin with a pension is like a safety net for your old age giving you a monthly income when you are no longer working right obviously this is called pension right why is it important as we get older our income usually decreases right so monthly income during unproductive year that is called so why it gave me important reason we are talking about the first reason is uh, as we go older get older our income usually decrease and with the rise of nuclear family migration uh, and the cost of living um, uh, help having a pension help us live, live with dignity and manage unforeseen expense now let's talk about the pension plan so there are two main stages to pension plan the first is called accumulation accumulation this is when you generally you regularly contribute money till retirement and the second is called wasting after retirement you start receiving your pension payment 
नाउ पेंशन फंड डू थ्री थ्री की थिंग वाट आर द थ्री की थिंग रन बाय द पेंशन फर्स्ट कलेक्ट कंट्रीब्यूशन पे आउट बेनिफिट ऑन टाइम एंड थर्ड इज इन्वेज द फंड टू ग्रो दैम नाउ लेट्स टॉक अबाउट द फाइनेंशियल गवर्नेंस एंड ई पी एफ लेट्स टॉक अबाउट इट इन द नेक्स्ट लाइट फाइनेंशियल गवर्नेंस एंड ई पी एफ सो एवरी आस्पेक्ट यू विल कवर गुड फाइनेंशियल गवर्नेंस इज अबाउट एंश्योरिंग दैट मनी इज हैंडल ट्रांसपेरेंटली एंड रिस्पॉन्सिबली फॉर द इम्प्लॉय प्रोविडेंट फंड फॉर दिस इम्प्लॉय प्रोविडेंट फंड इन इंडिया इट इज मैंडेटरी इट इज मैंडेटरी पेंशन सिस्टम फॉर प्राइवेट सेक्टर वर्कर इफ अ कंपनी हैज ट्वेंटी प्लस इम्प्लॉय ट्वेंटी और मोर इम्प्लॉय दे मस्ट ऑफर दिस पेंशन प्लान अनलेस दे हैव एन इक्वलेंट अल्टरनेटिव नाउ इन सो इन शॉर्ट पेंशन प्लान हेल्प अस मैनेज आवर लाइफ स्टाइल इन द ओल्ड एज एंड ई पी एफ इज वन ऑफ द वन ऑफ द सिस्टम एंश्योरिंग दैट इम्प्लॉय इन इंडिया हैव सिक्योर फ्यूचर नाउ लेट्स टॉक इन डिटेल अबाउट दिस ई पी एफ ओ सो ई पी एफ ओ हाउ इट वर्क एंड द कंट्रीब्यूशन यू एंड योर इम्प्लॉयर मेक टू वार्ड योर फ्यूचर लाउ द फर्स्ट ई पी एफ ओ स्टैंड फॉर इम्प्लॉय प्रोविडेंट फंड ऑर्गेनाइजेशन सॉरी फ्रेंड्स इट मैनेजेज द फंड प्रोविडेंट फंड फॉर इम्प्लॉय इन इंडिया एज वी ऑल नो इट इज रन बाय द सेंट्रल बोर्ड ऑफ ट्रस्टी पू रन इट इट इज रन बाय द सेंट्रल बोर्ड ऑफ ट्रस्टी सो यू कैन सी रिटर्न हेयर सेंट्रल बोर्ड ऑफ ट्रस्टी जस्ट वेट अ मिनट ओके so it is run by the central board of trustee as you can see and uh, uh, central board of trustee which includes the government the uh, the the employee and the employer right so three main is the, uh, three main components government employer and employee now there are three main scheme under the epfo the first is called eps which is called employee pension scheme the second is called ED edlis that is employee deposit link insurance scheme and the third is called epf that is employee provident fund scheme remember it so epfo job is to enforce the law maintain account you can see the function enforce law maintain account settle claim invest fund ensuring pension or payment and update record now uan so one important feature is the uan or universal account number uh, it links all your epf account making it easy to track your fund even if you switch job now if you talk about the contribution and benefits so both the employee and employer contribute 12% of your salary which includes basic plus da to the epf right and uh, if you talk about the employer contribution how it is divided let's see in the next slide how the employer contribution gets divided so you can see 3.6% to the epf and 8.33% to the eps means it goes to eps and it goes to eps that is pension scheme uh, already i have told you it has three part eps epf edlis right three main scheme so eps means employee pension scheme epf means employee provident fund scheme right so what is the benefit of this epf so it offer high high interest rate a tax exemption low risk and life insurance provide life insurance under the edlis scheme already i have told you there are three part of this epfo under the edlis scheme it provide you the life insurance and 3.67 goes to epf 8.33% goes to eps remember this thing question are asked let's look at how this work depending on your salary so if your salary is less than 15000 both you and your employer contribute based on your salary if your salary is 15000 you contribute rupees 1800 and employ obviously 12% of 15000 1800 and employer uh, also contribute based on rupees 15000 and if your salary exceed 15000 you still contribute 12% employer contribute on minimum or current salary right so in summary epfo ensure a secure future for employee through pension life insurance and provident fund saving so that is why the three components are there pension eps uh, saving uh, life insurance edli and and epf already we know so that's all for this now let's discuss the um, uh, exempted uh, exempted funds is very important so i will break it down in the simplest way possible exempted fund you know are the alternatives to epfo plan but they still follow the same rule they they all they offer the same contribution rate return and retirement age between 58 to 60 as you can see right uh, the best part is that you get tax benefit right this is the best part you get tax benefit and uh, uh, your contribution are deductible and the income from the investment is tax free so whatever investment income it is tax exempted these fund are managed by independent trust with employer and employee trust involved in the decision making as for investment most money goes to what government or public sector bonds but since 1998 uh, 10% can be invested in private bonds remember it uh, 
now if you talk about ppf that is public provident fund so it is a government backed scheme with 15 year lock in period mm -hmm. and uh, though, though you can extend it by extendable by 5 year you get amazing tax benefit contribution mm -hmm. um, are, 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 are deductible under section 80c and the returns are tax exempted okay and the minimum investment is 500 maximum investment is 1.5 lakh per year remember it now some key points about ppf let me let me show you so eligibility only indian citizen can open ppf account loans are available between 3rd and 5th year of your ppf account retirement benefit interest is compounded annually and uh, meaning you will see your money grow steadily now let's move on to the insurance annuity scheme see the uh, in, an, an annuity you know annuity is the reverse of life insurance instead of receiving a lump sum you get regular payment after retirement or after you pass away for your hires that is called annuity this is the reverse of uh, of your life insurance there are two type of annuity the one is called uh, immediate annuity so payment start right away you pay a single premium and if any any something happens to you your hires will receive the remaining payment right that is called immediate annuity and deferred annuity payment start at a future date giving you income later in the life so whether you are looking for long term saving with ppf or guaranteed income through annuity both option offer excellent benefits now let's talk about the national pension scheme nps is a social security scheme by the government you know this is a social security scheme this is open to the public private and unorganized sector except armed force right the only anyone who is indian citizen can join voluntarily right now the best part is that it is portable it means that mean you can carry it across job and location nps also offer tax benefit under atc and atccd and it is managed by pfrda and pran you know uh, once you sign up you get a pran that is permanent retirement account number and what is pfrda this is nothing but pension fund uh, pension fund regulatory and development authority now if you talk about the types of nps account see uh, there are two types of nps account the first is tier 1 tier 1 means what a pension account with restricted withdrawal tier 2 means what a voluntary account whether you can withdraw flexibly but only if you have an active tier 1 account now if you talk about the contribution here how contribution work employee contribute 10% of their salary and the government contribute uh, matches this this with another 10% and this money is then invested uh, uh, invested and grow based on market return until you retire now if you talk about the corporate nps and all citizen model see for company there is a corporate nps for companies there is a separate form of nps that is called corporate nps where business can adopt nps uh, with the flexible contribution rate for their employee for everyone else mm. uh, there is an all citizen model uh, yes work so this uh, nps is defined as a uh, let me let me give you an example so how does this nps work uh, let me just wait a minute yeah uh, so nps is a defined contribution plan right meaning your wealth depend on your contribution investment growth right contribution plus investment growth and uh, minimal charges so bank public and private acts as a point of presence that is called pop that bank and public bank either it is public or it is private bank acts like a point of presence to collect your nps payment now uh, and the N and nsdl you know nsdl uh, nsdl is called cra cra means central record keeping agency issuing you 12 digit plan pran number now what is the formula for accumulated wealth your accumulated wealth is equal to contribution plus investment growth minus charges now so nps is a flexible tax saving and portable way to secure your future now let's discuss the key components of this particular uh, N uh, nps so subscriber employer payment right so either, either you call it subscriber or employer payment or or investment growth market dependent return charges admin fund management transaction fee etc now if you talk about the accumulated pension wealth in nps account so first what is accumulated pension wealth it is total amount in your nps account that decide your pension benefit when you retire so there are two types or two type of nps account tier 1 we know this is a mandatory retirement account you can't withdraw from it until you retire and tier 2 is voluntary and you can't you can withdraw from it any time your contribution are handled by pfm pfm means pension fund manager right so which is registered with pf rda now they follow strict guideline to protect your money investing in things like government security corporate bonds and equities now you have two investment approach the first is called active choice so you choose the fund right so you can see the investment approach are two active choice means you choose the fund that is active and auto choice means uh, the system chooses for you based on life cycle strategy here is the here is how withdrawal work so partial withdrawal so you can withdraw up to 25% of your contribution after 5 year for a specific region right the premature withdrawal after 10 year or after uh, after 10 year or after 3 year if you join post 
एंड नॉर्मल विड्रॉल आफ्टर सिक्सटी ईयर और थ्री ईयर आफ्टर ज्वाइनिंग इफ़ यू ज्वाइन पोस्ट सिक्सटी सो वैन यू रिटायर यू कैन विड्रॉ सिक्सटी परसेंट ऑफ योर कॉर्पर्स राइट एंड रिमेनिंग फोर्टी परसेंट मस्ट गो टू आर परचेजिंग एंड एन्यूटी फॉर रेगुलर इनकम राइट ना इफ यू टॉक अबाउट द एक्सटेंडेड कंट्रीब्यूशन यू कैन कंटिन्यू कंट्रीब्यूटिंग अंटिल यू आर सेवेंटी फाइव ईयर ओल्ड एंड एग्जिट एनी टाइम बिफोर दैन बिफ यू वॉन्ट सो दैट इज़ अ क्विक ओवर व्यू ऑफ हाउ योर एन पी एस अकाउंट वर्क फ्रॉम ग्रोइंग योर पेंशन वेल्थ टू मैनेजिंग विड्रॉल नाउ लेट्स टॉक अबाउट द टीयर टू अकाउंट ऑलरेडी वे आई हेव टोल्ड यू सेवरल टाइम दैट सी टीयर टू अकाउंट इज सुपर फ्लेक्सीबल यू कैन मेक अनरिस्ट्रिक्ट अनरिस्ट्रिक्टेड विड्रॉल एनी टाइम अनलाइक द टीयर वन अकाउंट बट कीप इन माइंड वैन यू क्लोज योर टीयर वन अकाउंट द टीयर टू अकाउंट गेट क्लोज टू Now let's talk about ASP. AS to ASP means annuity service provider. So, they, so these are organisation licensed by IRDA, and currently there are seven impanelled ASP offering annuity, which give you a regular income after retirement. Now let's move on to the Atal Pension Yojana. Atal Pension Yojana designed to give pension benefit to worker in unorganised health worker. So you can see in this PDF I have highlighted all the important points. And if you want this PDF, you can enrol in our INIFS capsule course. The link of the course is provided in the description section, and I will provide you similar PDF for all. the units this will help you in quick revision of entire un entire units so eligibility is that uh, you must be uh, guaranteed pension to 1000 to 5000 per month this is the guaranteed pension and eligibility is that you must be 18 to 18 to 40 years this range right citizenship must be an indian citizen including nri however if you have income tax liability from 1st october 2022 so you are not eligible now uh, account requirement you uh, you will need a saving bank account or post office saving account to join if you don't have one you can open it through a bank or post office if you talk about the employment status this is it is open to all citizen no matter whether you work whether in government public sector or private now that's a quick overview of tier 2 uh, everything so this was all about our chapter hopefully you enjoy the session if you really think this video was useful please hit the like button do subscribe our channel for receiving such type of content and do share with your fellow colleague and for pdf you can whatsapp me on this particular number or you can enroll in our infs capsule course program